four. Here we go. Whoop. I'm just trying to do it so I don't have to use my phone. It's like I be holding my phone and try. It's just all shaky. And if I, I was watching, I'd close out because it's too shaky. There we go. Praise the Lord. We're on and popping. Yes. All right. Cool beans. Okay. So here we go, guys. All right. So we are on. Um, we're gonna go into prayer. You want to pray? Who wants to pray tonight? Anybody want to start us out in prayer? Rochelle, you want to pray tonight? Yes, I'll pray. Do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of us to be able to come together tonight and get your word through Miss Nia and Pastor Sean and just come together here and try to figure out how to dissect through this these days that we're going through right now and understand that we don't want to argue with one another. We're trying to bring everybody to an understanding so we can come out here and work for your kingdom and do what we got to do for, for you and all of our brothers and sisters and help bring the body of Christ together and unite us and just to have your way here tonight. And we love you so much. We pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. All right. So bless the Lord. How's everyone doing tonight? By a show of hands or nodding of the head or moving it, you can write in the chat, text in the chat, or however you want to do it. You can smile like most of you doing right now. Um, praise the Lord. We're glad to be back on here tonight. Um, we were coming on tonight, and uh, like my wife said, we have been praying about um, you know what the Lord wanted to say, and then uh, she uh, brought this to my attention, and um, I'm like, okay, well, what better place to start than right here? Uh, so that's where we are right now. Um, and tonight, uh, what we're going to do, like I said, this is a uh, this is a uh, open discussion. Uh, it is a, a Bible study, but as well as is, it is an open discussion. And again, we uh, reiterate uh, that uh, we are not or don't claim to, in no wise, know it all, uh, because there is a lot that we don't know, and there's things that you know that we don't know, and vice versa. And so we just like to come together for all of us to share uh, what we know. Uh, from the word of God, what God has revealed to us. And so, uh, and that is the uh, object of this Bible study, all right, so that we can all grow together. The Bi Bible says that we are one body, but we are many members. And then it says we're fitly joined together in every joint supply. So what, what God has given you, I need, and what God has given me, you need. And so we all need each other. And so uh, that's what the body of Christ is all about. And every function in the body is not the same. We, we have different functions in the body. You know, the foot can't do what the hand does and vice versa. So uh, there, there are many different uh, varieties of gifts and talents and um, ideas and revelations and different things that the Lord has given all of us. And so, uh, and that's where we are tonight uh, with this. Uh, tonight, uh, from, from the discussion that was had, uh, that, that was shared with me, uh, let's talk tonight from the topic tonight, um, um, truth versus tradition. All right, truth versus tradition. All right, and um, we're gonna go over some scriptures tonight. So if, if you have pens and pads ready, let's uh, get ready to take them down. And I'm gonna have my wife to read since she said that I need specs. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow her to read tonight um, in my stead so that we can um, see what the word of God says concerning the things that were on our heart. Um, again, if you have some questions that you would like to ask, uh, you can either raise your hand or you could, uh, uh, text in the chat, you know, whatever that question may be. And we can ask that, we can answer that question to the best of our ability. If not, if we can't answer it or find it in the word of God, then we will allow someone of someone on on, on here uh, that can do it, that does know it. And, you know, they can give their input and share it, and we can all do it together. All right. And so um, if you don't want to text, uh, like I said, you can raise your hand and we'll give you space uh, to ask that question. And we'll try our best to answer that question to the best of our ability um, out of the word of God, all right? And we try our best not to give opinions, uh, but we try our best to give what the word of God says, all right? All right, so let's get ready to move on. Let's get ready to get into this thing. Uh, I see all you smiling faces, you ready and happy and hungry, excited, and uh, just ready to jump into it. Um, thank God, Rochelle, for your prayer tonight, um, opening up. God's doing some great things with all of you, and um, I, I can see a lot of growth in all of you uh, since the first time we've gotten together. Uh, from our first meeting, I, I just see so much growth and it's such a blessing 
to see all of you blossoming and flourishing and 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 bearing fruit. I mean, uh, some warriors for Christ on here. Amen. All right, so uh, <laughs> let's get ready to jump in. Let's let's get ready to jump in. Oh, that must be Claude. <laughs> That's Claude. Hey, Claude, you want to? He said they sell them specs for two dollars at Dollar Store. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a waste of two dollars, Claude. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's let's get ready to move in. Let's let's see where we want to start at. Um, all right, so the the topic of discussion today was um, that the importance of keeping the Sabbath days and um, following after the the order and the word and the obedience of God. All right, if I'm right, I think that's where we are. Mm -hmm. All right, and also paganism. And uh, pagan holidays, should Christians celebrate pagan holidays? That's a great topic of discussion right there. Um, and, um, and I think that we'll find some interesting answers when it comes to that. And uh, there are a lot of people all over the world, not just the United States, all over the world, um, that is not privy to the actual understanding uh, according to scripture and the origin of a lot of holidays that we celebrate. All right, so that was that's a great topic to bring up, all right? So uh, let's get started with uh, let's let's get started with uh, with the with the tradition. Let's go. Let's go. Let's start at uh, Matthew Matthew chapter twelve, verse one. All right. So if we're gonna get down to the the bottom of this, then we 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 really need to have an understanding of what the Bible says about it, and have an understanding of how God feels about it. A lot of times, there are a lot of people, again, you know, we went over this, uh, I think when we first started this group, we did a class on this, and we're, we're again, we're, we're talking about exegesis, hermeneutics, uh, we talked about, uh, you know, proper interpretation, uh, methods to use to better help us and the Holy, allow the Holy Spirit to give us full revelation of what the scripture is actually saying, all right, and there are some things that we talked about and discussed in there that, of what we need to do to find out. And, and, and a few of those things was the who, the what, the how, the where, the when, the why, and all of those good things, all right? And then we uh, also did another teaching um, on the dispensations. We talked about seven dispensations, that there were times and that there were ages and, there, and where God allowed or, or, or tolerated a certain thing. And then there was a time where he did not allow and, or tolerated a certain thing. And then there was some times where he tolerated a certain thing and allowed a certain, well, I said it backwards, where he didn't allow a certain thing, but then eventually that thing changed, all right, in, a, in, a, in another dispensation, um, according to the laws, according to the culture, according to the dispensation of that time, all right, and so we, we, we talked about all of that, and so we have to put all of that into play when we're discussing it, so we're going to we're gonna look at Matthew here, uh, chapter 12, verse 1 through 15 to begin with, and we're going to, we're just going to see the heart of God, because when we're reading the, the word of God, and again, a lot of times, a lot of people read the word of God, but they just read it, you know, and let that be, all right, but when you read the word of God, you have to know the heart of God, all right, so in other words, you have to learn the author's intent, all right, and one, and one of the ways of better discerning the author's intent is to understand the character in the heart of the author, all right. We know that according to scripture that the Bible said that all scripture is, is, is inspired, is the inspired, inspired word of God. All right. So it's inspired by God is the breathed word of God is the living word of God. And so uh, with that being said is that we have to learn the heart of, of the author. All right. And so when we do that, then we can better understand the motive behind the things that were said or the things that were done. And, and then we can see kind of see the direction that is going in in the way that it was explained. All right. right. So let's look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 1 through 15, and we're going to kind of see the heart of God, uh, Jesus Christ himself, uh, when it comes to certain traditions, uh, certain laws, or certain things that man have uh, put in place or that they hold to a high esteem or, or some may not hold to a high esteem. Let's look at that. Matthew 12 and 1, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, at that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him, 
how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which is which it was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? Verse six, I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless for the son of man is the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. All right. Stop there. That's verse eight. That's verse eight. You want right. me to go to 15? Go to 15. I'm going to 15. Verse nine. And he went on from there and entered the synagogue and a man was there with a withered hand and they asked him, is it lawful to hear to heal on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him? He said to them, this is Jesus saying, which one of you who has a sheep? If it falls into the pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? Or how much more value is man than a sheep? So it is, so it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out and it was restored, healthy like the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. Amen. Hold up. And 15. And Jesus was aware of this, withdrew from there, and many followed him, and he healed them all. Praise the Lord. All right. So again, when we're reading the scripture, when we study the scripture, we have to learn the heart of God. All right. And you heard in there what she read. It says that on the Sabbath day, all right, um, the Sabbath was a day that God commanded the children to keep in the Old Testament. He, he, he commanded the, the uh, set aside this day to be a day of rest and to keep it holy. All right, That's, that, that was one of the Sabbaths. But even though we know, according to the Jewish, Jewish history, they had many Sabbaths. They had another Sabbath, which was the Shabbat. Uh, they had another Sabbath, which was, um, I forgot the name of it, uh, but there were many Sabbaths. And then they even had a high Sabbath, all right, that they celebrated. So when we're interpreting the word, we have to have a clear understanding uh, of which particular Sabbaths that he's talking about. Now, we know clearly, according to the seventh day, which Sabbath that is, all right? And so that's the one that we're dealing with right now, just to keep it simple, uh, starting out. But we have to understand which Sabbath, and that is, and, and understand the fact that there are more than one Sabbath as well. All right, so now we have Jesus here in the book of Matthew. It said him and his uh, disciples were walking through the field, and it was on the Sabbath day, all right? Now, According to some laws, they were already breaking the law before they even uh, got to where the Pharisees was because they even had it down to a science to, to where if you walked a certain amount of steps on the Sabbath day, then that was considered work. All right. So you were in violation of the law of that particular time. So uh, we have to look at how God intended for it to be versus how man had perverted it and made it to be. All right. So now in the beginning, you know, God said, that let it be a day of rest and to keep it holy. All right. Now, Jesus and his disciples are walking through the cornfield and his disciples were hungry and the, and the, and the, and the wheat, the grain was ripe. And so they began to pluck the heads off and they began to eat. God bless you, Juanita. And they began to eat. All right. And uh, as they began to eat and then they got where the Pharisees was, the, the rulers, the, the teachers of the law, the keepers of the synagogue. All right, of God, when they got to where he was, all right, they, the Pharisees said uh, of Jesus, why are your uh, disciples violating the laws of the Sabbath? All right, and, 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 and they began to uh, tell him that. And Jesus said, well, have you not read the scripture where David and his, and his men went into the sanctuary and they were hungry and they ate the showbread, the bread that was upon the altar that nobody was supposed to touch, but yeah. the priest, all right, and they were yet without blame. He said, have you read in the scripture also where the priests who are assigned to the day of the Sabbath, when they did their Sabbath duties, they desecrated the temple, but yet and still they're held guiltless, all right? He said, did not you read that or remember that? All right, so and he says, if you would understand these words, then you would understand that uh, the Lord desires uh, mercy over sacrifice. Yeah. All right. So in other words, he was telling them that, you know, uh, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. He said, you know, I'm not one that have to answer to the Sabbath. I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. And so if I'm here with them and I didn't condemn them, 
then you have no right to condemn them. Mm. All right. Now this was considered, this was about the Sabbath. All right. So we're, we're learning the heart of God according to the scriptures. All right. And so that's what we have to do. So we can't just take and, and see, and that's why motive is very important. If, if, if our motives haven't been changed, if God hadn't correct our motives yet, right, and we get into the word of God, and then we read the scriptures, and our motives are impure, then we'll take that holy scripture, and then we'll use it as a weapon, all right, to bring judgment or con condemnation upon somebody else, or we use it to whip them or, or hit them over the head with it, all right, instead of allowing the scriptures to be used for what God intended for it to be used for. Yes. Again, knowing the heart and the intent of the author, all right? So the Sabbath wasn't giving to be a burden to condemn mankind, but it was placed there for a reason to set something in motion. All right, see, God had just created creation in Genesis when the Sabbath, when he first established the Sabbath. He worked, he became an example. He worked six days in creation. And the Bible said on the seventh day, he rested. Yes. All right, so he set in motion how man was supposed to operate. All right, and that is that they're to work six days and then on the seventh day, they would have rest. Even when, and, that, and when he set that in motion, it was not only for man following that order, it was for the entire world, everything he created to that to be, all right? Um, and yes, uh, the Sabbath, according to the Jewish calendar, is actually on Saturday, uh, good point, April. Um, and so uh, the dates and times have been changed, all right? So uh, not only did he command mankind to rest, but he commanded everything in the creation to rest, all right, according to the number seven. So if you go on a little further and read in scripture, you'll find that he told the people, he says, all right, you can work the land, all right, for seven years. But on the seventh year, I want you to let the land rest, all right, for seven years, all right, so that it can rejuvenate and revitalize and get itself back together so it can yield and bear forth more fruit. All right. But man perverted that also because they got greedy and they want to grow multiple crops and they want to store it up. All right, and hold it so that they can keep this mass production going so that they can gain finance. All right. So it was perverted. All right. But that wasn't the author's intent of it. All right. And so now here, uh, up in to Jesus coming on the scene, all right, he taught them and he told the disciples and corrected them when they tried to bring condemnation according to the law to those who were not keeping the Sabbath. He said, All right, uh, didn't you hear about David? Didn't you read about him? Then you read about the, the priest, all right? And that was going on before Jesus came on the scene. He said, but yet they were blameless, all right? And he said, so I am the Lord of the Sabbath, yeah. and I'm walking through the field with them, yeah. and I didn't turn to rebuke them for doing it, so how are you going to do it, all right? Because I'm the Lord of the Sabbath, all right? Um, and so we see that. So we have to first look at the heart of the author and look at the intent and the motive behind uh, what was saying, why did we have to look at why did God establish the Sabbath? All right. Why was it put in place? All right. And he set that in motion so that man would know how to operate. So man would know that you don't go and work 24, seven, seven days a week for the rest of your life and just kill yourself at the age of 23, trying to uphold all that. All right. But you need a time of rest, a time of, of rejuvenation, revitalization. All right. All right. And now, according to the Jewish custom, all right, he, God at this time, um, went on a little further, and, and then the, the the nation of Israel had been established, all right? Then there were laws that were put in place uh, with Israel, and they were put in place to bring uh, some type of solace and safety and some kind of guidelines and boundaries for uh, the Israelites, all right? Because the Israelites were his, were his people, and they were to live a certain standard so that they would be living in such a way that they would be ready and, and prepared for the coming of their Messiah. Right. All right. So that's the that was the purpose of the law. All right. The purpose of the law for them was to have them ready and have them in the right position, in the right posture, so that when the uh when when the Messiah came, that they would be ready to receive him. But in many in the case that we see, even in Matthew right here, you see that many were not in position to receive him. That's why he says in the word in the book of John, he said, I came into my own and my own received me not, but right. as, as many has received me th to them, I gave power to become the sons of God. All right. So in other words, the keepers of the law, the Pharisees, the Sadducees describes these people were keepers of the law. Uh, they were, they were uh, uh, rulers of the synagogue. 
All right, but yet and still, they were teaching the people about a coming Messiah. And then when the Messiah showed up, because of their traditions, they didn't even recognize it. Mm. All right, the person that they were preaching about, the person that they were teaching about, the one that they knew according to the prophets that was going to come, all right, because of their tradition and all the things and the burdens they put on themselves and all of that, that then um, because of that, they themselves didn't even recognize him when he came. Jesus. All right. Can y'all imagine that talking about this guy, talking mm -hmm. about this Messiah that's supposed to be coming and then he shows up and because, because you have man-made so much stuff and came up with so much stuff, you don't even recognize the very one that you're talking about. My guy, right. Jesus right in front of them, the Messiah right in front of them. And because they put laws on top of laws on top of laws to cover the very original, they didn't even realize who Jesus was. Right. And so what the what Lord the what mercy. the Pharisees and the scribes did was that they created what they called the Mishnah and the Talmud. All right. These were two books that they lived by. They were rule books. They were full of feasts and festivals that they created to help them better keep the law of God. So them keeping the law of God was not enough within itself for them. They had to create feasts and festivals, all right, to uh, allow them to, you know, have something to go by to make sure that they kept the law of God, yes. all right? And so it was so much so that they, they began to hold those fe feasts and festivals to a higher degree than the law of God, and then they end up missing God when he showed up, mm. all right? Because they had all of these rules and regulations that they came up with all these feasts and festivals that they came up with, all right, versus just obeying the law of God, yeah. all right, and they miss it, all right, because of the mission and the Talmud, all right, and so moving along, yes, we're going to get to that, we're going to, we're going to move on into should Christians celebrate uh, Christmas um, and Easter and all of those things like that, we'll get in, we're going to get into that, all right, let's, let's move right along, all right, so now, let's, all right, we, we, we saw how Jesus himself felt about, um, you know, us living according to the Sabbath and what how we should live according to the Sabbath, all right? And the things that we couldn't do and could not do on the Sabbath day, all right? You want to explain that about the sheep, you know, if, if she was sick on oh, yeah. that day. Okay, all right. Just But yeah, so what she's saying is that, you know, even um, some people because, about not all right, they, 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 he went on further and he's, the Bible says he went into their synagogue, all right? The ones that he was talking to then, the rulers of the synagogue, he went into their synagogue and he saw a man with a withered hand. And then, so they tried to say, okay, well, you know, he's doing a lot of stuff wrong on the Sabbath, so let's just test him and see what he got to say. And so they said, all right, is it lawful to heal a man on the Sabbath? All right, and Jesus said, he said, is there anyone in here whose ox, if it go and fall in the ravine, all right, would you not leave your house and go get it out of the ditch? All right, and if it was hungry, would you not go out and feed it? All right, and different things like that. So, and he was saying that all of you, the ones who are trying to condemn the people and hold them to the law are not following the law yourselves. All right. So he was saying that if you, if you were following the law, like you were supposed to, then you would have full right to bring this condemnation to them. All right. But because you are not in that place yourself, then you don't have a right to hold someone to a standard that you yourself don't live by. All right. And so, and, 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 and you see that a lot, you know, that's a, that's that, Pharisee can anointing, I, I call it, all right? The anointing of the, of the Pharisees, all right? And you don't want that anointing. Yeah, because that's the thing, though. Jesus said, I, he said, I didn't come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill it. And so those of you who try to live by the law, you'll be judged by the law. So mm -hmm. if you're going to live according to the law, then live according to the whole law and not just the ones that you want to live by because you will be judged by it. But those who are not living according to the law because he came to fulfill it, you are now living under grace. Mm -hmm. So are you going to live under grace or are you going to live under the law? That's right. the question. Right. All right. Because and and and, and we get this a lot. I, I, I deal. I even had some in my church. Um, they're called they're called Sabbath keepers. All right. And their whole thing is keeping the Sabbath. All right. Uh, uh, they will come to Bible study, but they wouldn't come on Sundays because they say, you know, Saturdays is the Sabbath and they're not supposed to do anything on the Sabbath and all that kind of stuff. And which is good. Like, like I say, and we don't condemn anyone for believing either way because you're not supposed to. All right. And this is what Jesus was teaching here. And we're going to and we're going to actually read it in scripture where that's the way that God intended for us to for it to be for us. All right. And so uh, he's saying, Jesus is saying pretty much, and the scripture says that if you live according to the law, then you have to fulfill the whole law. So that means if you're going to be a Sabbath keeper, that means you got to go back 
to kill some goats and lambs for you, for the atonement of your sin. That means you got to go back and, and have the turtle doves and give up the first fruit offers and all that stuff. That means you got to go back to all of those old laws and keep all those old laws. And then if you if you break one of those laws, then the Bible said that you're guilty of the whole law. All right. Mm. So in other words, God was trying to teach us that when he came and gave his life, that's why the scriptures you just said, Jesus said, I didn't come to uh, get rid of the law, but I came to fulfill it. Yeah. What does it mean to fulfill it? It means that you knuckleheads couldn't keep it. All right. Because you were weak according to the flesh. So I came and perfected it and completed it and fulfilled it. Yes. And so now that I fulfilled it, you don't have to live by it. All right. Paul talks about in Romans seven, how God has redeemed us from the law of sin and death. So therefore we no longer live according to the law, but we live under God's grace. All right. Now, should we continue in sin that grace may, may abound, that uh, sin may abound? No. All right. We, uh, God forbid, we live and don't have a license to sin, but we live under the grace of God according to the bounds, living circumspectly according to the word of God. That if we do mess up, that if we do mess up, we have an advocate with the Father and we quickly get it right with him. All yes, right. Yes. And so, um, and we're going to see further in scripture with that, with Abraham, how Abraham was not a Jew. Uh, I mean, he was a Jew, but Abraham was not a uh, he didn't practice Judaism. Abraham didn't practice. Uh, he wasn't circumcised according to the law in the beginning when God dealt with him. All right. So God dealt with him and declared him to be a father of faith and declared that the nation of his chosen people were going to be born through his loins before he even got in the position to do all the rituals and rites that he was supposed to do according to the Jewish custom because right. he didn't believe that way. He was a moon worshiper and God spoke to him. In, in, in the middle of the night and told him what to do. And Abraham acted on it and staggered not at the promises of God and God imputed righteousness into him because he obeyed him to the T. Jesus, All right. So yes. in other words, Abraham believed him by faith. He didn't believe him by rites and rituals. He believed him by faith. Yeah. All right. So we won't get into that a little bit. All right. So that that's letting us see the heart of God and how he feels about this particular thing. All right. Colossians chapter two. All right, read the message. Just do it. hold it. chapter two with me till I tell you to stop. Go to verse one. You want me to read it in the message? Yes. Okay. Colossians chapter two, and I'm gonna read it in the message until he tells me to stop. And um, if you guys have questions, instead of unmute, and you guys can type them in the chat, and we'll follow it. Okay. And so Colossians chapter two in the message translation reads: I want you to realize that I continue to work as hard as I know how for you and also for the Christians over at Laodicea. 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 Not many of you have met me face to face, but that doesn't make any difference. Know that I'm on your side, right alongside you. You are not in this alone. I want you woven into a tapestry of love in touch with everything there is to know of God. Then you will have minds confident and at rest, focused on Christ, God's great mystery. All the riches, treasures of wisdom and knowledge are embedded in that mystery and nowhere else and we've been shown the mystery i'm telling you this because i don't want anyone leading you off on some wild goose chase after other so-called mysteries or the secret i'm a long way off true and you may never lay eyes on me but believe me i'm on your side right beside you i am delighted to hear of the careful and orderly ways you conduct your affairs and impressed with the solid substance of your faith in Christ. My counsel for you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given. You've received Christ Jesus, the master. Now live him. You're deeply rooted in him. You're well constructed upon him. You know your way around faith. Now do what you've been taught. School's out. Quit studying the subject and start living it. And let your living spill over into thanksgiving. Watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and empty superstitions of spirit beings, but that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in him so you can see and hear him clearly. You don't need a telescope, a microscope, or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without him. When you come to him, that fullness comes together for you too. His power extends over everything. 
entering into his fullness is not something you figure out or achieve. It's not a matter of being circumcised or keeping a long list of laws. No, you're already insiders, not through some secretive initiation, right? But rather through what Christ has already gone through for you, destroying the power of sin. If it's an initiation ritual you're after, you've already been through it by submitting to baptism. Going under the water was a burial of your old life. Coming up was of it, coming up out of it was a resurrection. God raised you from the dead as he did Christ. When you were stuck in your own sin dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive right along with Christ. Think of it. All sins forgiven. The slate has been wiped clean. That old arrest warrant canceled and nailed to the cross. He stripped the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. So don't put up with anyone pressuring you in details of diet, worship services, or holy days. All those things are mere shadows cast before what was to come. The substance is Christ. Don't tolerate people who try to run your life, ordering you to bow and scrape, insisting that you join their obsession with angels and that you seek out visions. They're, they are a lot of hot air. That's all they are. They're completely out of touch with their source of life, Christ, who puts us together in one piece, whose very breath and blood flow through us. He is the head and we are the body. We can grow up healthy in God only as he nourishes, nourishes us. Last part. So then if with Christ, you've put all that pretentious and inf infantile religion behind you, why do you let yourselves be bullied by it? Don't touch this. Don't taste that. Don't go near this. Do you think these things are here today and gone tomorrow are worth that kind of attention? Such things sound impressive, impressive if said in a deep enough voice that even give the illusion of being pious and humble and authentic, but they're just another way of showing off trying to make yourselves look important. My God, I'm going to throw this phone. I'm going to throw right. this whole phone. That was good. All right. All right. Before we move on, we said a lot already. Uh, anybody got any comments or questions concerning this? Anybody want to add to I'm going to throw this phone. I'm about to throw it. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, what, was that scripture, what was that scripture again? That was good. Colossians chapter two, the whole chapter, one through 23 or 25. Okay. That was the message translation, and it was the bomb. Hey, Sarita. Yes, thank you. That right there is a is a mouthful in itself. God, I thank you. All right. So again, we're looking at the heart of God, and this was Paul describing this to the Colossians. All right, uh, they they had an issue concerning this. All right, they they were following after all these genealogies and all of this uh, talk of uh, you know Sabbaths and all of this other stuff, and so Paul was giving a breakdown and uh, a clear understanding of all of that. And so, this, as you say, the scriptures said it all, all right? And there's nothing really said, but there's one verse I want to focus on in particular, and that was the 17th verse. All right, let's start at 16. It says, therefore, and I'm reading the New, New International Verse, it said, therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat, drink, or with regard to religious festivals or new moons or celebrations of a Sabbath day. All right, 17th verse says, these are a shadow of the things that are that were to come and the reality however is found in christ all right so in other words paul was telling them that the keeping of these sabbath days and all of these festivals that were done in in the under the old law they were just a shadow an expression of what was to come and he said in the fulfillment or the reality of these things are found in christ jesus that's why jesus was able to speak the way he spoke when he was there with the Pharisees and he told them, said, did not you read about David, how he ate the showbread, him and his men? Did you not read how the, the priests desecrated the temple on the Sabbath day and yet still they were guiltless? Why? Because he was the fulfillment of all of that. All right, so now he's Lord of the Sabbath and because he have died on the cross, we have the Sabbath every day. Yeah. Now, if some people choose to keep the Sabbath, and live according to the Sabbath that way, then that's fine as well. The scripture says that also. He says that if one man esteem one day higher than the other, another, I'm going to read that scripture to you too. He says, then let that be. All right, but let him be fully persuaded in his own mind. And then he said, if another does not hold that same day to the, the same esteem as that other one, then he says, okay, again, let that man, all right, be fully persuaded in his own mind. And it's okay for the both of them. All right. So in other words, God delivered us from the law. So the, 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 
these festivals, these feasts, and these Sabbaths, and these things were kept under the law, all right? But we have been redeemed from the law, all right? And, we have, and we're now under the grace of God in another dispensation, all right? So now uh, we, we live, according, and like Paul said, because of this grace that I have, I no longer live. I'm dead because of the law. And he said, I no longer live, but it's now Christ that lives in me. Yeah. All right. And, and I live by the faith of the son of God that's in me. So it's no longer I that live, but it's the, uh, the faith of the son of God that lives in me. So in other words, I have been delivered from the law. All right. And so and that's why God told him, he said, all right, you could not keep the law being that you were weak in the flesh. Yeah. All right. You were not able to keep all these rules, these regulations, these feasts, these festivals. So many. God says too much for you. <laughs> Let me go ahead and do away with it. Let me go ahead and fulfill it. So you won't have to do it. All right. So now what it is that under grace, we have the Holy Spirit and we live by the law. All right. And I mean, live, we live according to the law by faith in Christ Jesus. And it's fulfilled because Christ is in us and because we have the Holy Spirit. So in other words, when we go to error against what God's <laughs> word is, then what happened is that the Holy Spirit will convict you and pull you back and say, no, that's not the way that you're supposed to go. All right. And so, and, and that's how it is. And so let, let's, let's go on down a little further. All right. Any more, any questions or comments? We're going to get into the, the, the meat of it. All right. With the, with the Christmas and the Easter and all of that stuff too. And it, and it's, and you're going to find that very interesting as well. Some of you, and a lot of you already know. All right. Any questions, comments? You can unmute if you don't can't type it quick enough as well either. All right. So verse 17, 2 and 17 of Colossians, it says that these things are a shadow of what was to come. All right. It was a, it was a shadow of, 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 um, of what was to come. And what was to come was Jesus Christ. All right. These those things I told you in the Old Testament, there were a lot of types of Christ. All right. And the types of Christ were these events that took place in the lives of those people. And those illustrations of what happened in their life was a demonstration to us of what was to, what was going to come. And that was Christ Jesus. All right. And so now Christ have already come and Christ have already died. Then we, we, we have now who accepted him have been set free from a, a lot of these things that was weighing the people down before his coming. All right. All right. So now let's look at what the law of God is. Go to Galatians chapter three, verse 24. You can type it in there while I can look it up. Galatians chapter three. Galatians chapter three, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Throwing me off my game. Yeah, All right. Now, what was I saying? Where was I at? Galatians, Galatians 3 and 24. All right. It reads So then the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. All right. Now, another translation, King James Version, I think it says that the law is a schoolmaster that leads us to Christ. So everything that was under the law, it was given as a schoolmaster, as a guardian to protect us that and to keep us, us and to bring us to, to the fulfillment of Christ. That we might be justified, that we might be justified by, faith. by faith in him. All right. So that was the purpose of the law. So uh, the, the law. All right. In other words, the law was like the training wheels to keep you from falling off the bicycle. All right. Until Christ comes and teach you how to ride it. All right. And he grabbed hold to you <laughs> and he, he showed you how to ride it. Then the training wheels can come off it because he's up. Hold he's holding you up. About the All right. The All right. I think I already told him about that. Oh, okay. All right. And so, um, yeah. And so that's, that's kind of what it was. He said that the heir, as long as it's a child, it requires guardians, you know, uh, people to take care of it and to have authority over it. All right. But when he reaches full age and maturity, then he's able to stand on his own. All right. So the law itself is a, a schoolmaster that leads us to Christ. And once we get to the point in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, then we have his Holy Spirit. Then we can move and flow. 
uh, in the things of God. All right. Like I was saying about a lot of you, I see see the growth since we first started out until where you are now and how you guys are, are out there um, tearing down the devil's kingdom and um, and all that good stuff and so forth. All right. So. All right. Now let's go one more. And then we, we and we're going to get into the meat of all that stuff that we were talking about. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 14, verse five through three. Yeah, three through five. I don't know how to say it. All right. Romans chapter 14, verse three through five. All right, y'all ready? 14, three through five. In the English Standard Version, it reads, let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. And let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. Amen. That's what I just told you a minute ago. It says, you know, don't judge one another according to what, what, what one another eat. You, you know, some people say, well, you can't eat you can't eat pork. You can't eat catfish. You can't eat shrimp. You can't eat shellfish or bottom feeders, anything like that. Then there's some that said, okay, well, you can eat anything. And it's to be received with gladness as long as you bless it. All right. And, and then he says, there's some that esteem one day higher than another. He said, but don't condemn him because then there's another one that views every day the same. All right. And he said, but they're all welcomed by God. All right. So in other words, we shouldn't work so hard to make a distinction between the two. All right. Uh, because of that. Now, uh, when it comes to paganism, we do have to make a distinction. All right. Uh, because we're not we're not commanded by God or instructed by God to follow out the paganism. God told us to separate from it. He said, be you separate. And, and come out from among them, all right? So the world systems and the things that the worlds have set up and the way that they worship and the things that were implemented, uh, we're not supposed to follow after those things, all right? And so uh, that's gonna bring us into up on, into the um, things that, we, the meat of what we were discussing, all right? Uh, so is it is it right, all right, for a Christian, I'm gonna start with this one, is it right for a Christian to, and I'm gonna ask this question to someone on here. I want someone to answer me. Is it right for a believer, a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ to um, celebrate Easter? All right. Uh, to answer that, I would say to whom much is given, much is required. Because um, you like if people are learned that Easter is, meant a certain way so if they're thinking that they're celebrating the resurrection of christ then yes they are um it's okay for them to do that but if they're you know like once you realize that it's not what it is then that's when the conviction comes in that's just my opinion okay all right oh well viral right there uh knocking kneecaps off devils and stuff i i saw some of the uh, writings and posts that she's been putting up <laughs> she know how to uh she know how to hurt a devil, I tell you that. All right. Um, so anybody else like to add to that? She was saying, you know, about uh Easter. Some people think that they're celebrating the resurrection and they're actually celebrating, you know, Easter and different things like that. Because they don't understand that because they don't understand holiday. it's a pagan holiday. All right. Anybody else feel whether it's right or wrong? And you don't have to be uh afraid to respond. It ain't gonna be like I'm gonna come with some answer that's just gonna crush you and just make you look crazy in front of everybody that's it's not that <laughs> i'm not that deep <laughs> it's okay we're learning sorry go ahead I was, I was gonna say from my understanding now that i have an understanding of what it means i kind of like in in my mind i i feel like i should start saying like it's resurrection day instead of easter but that's just i don't know i don't even know what i'm talking about but i feel like it's not what it what we've been celebrating like through the church the idea of it i feel like god showed me that it's much more than that it's about okay. his resurrection and not like just about being called easter 
I don't know. Okay, <laughs> good point. You know, you know what you're talking about. All right. Stop doubting yourself, Rochelle. Right. Sarita says she Sorry. has no voice. It's you, okay. We got you. Hey, but you got some fingers, Sarita, because we know you got some good stuff to say. <laughs> All right. What scripture? All right. Do you want to? So, um, is it is it right to celebrate um, Easter? All right. Uh, no, it's not right to celebrate Easter. All right. And so we have to come to we have to understand what happened with all of this. Why why has a portion of the church been celebrating Easter and and and, and all these good things like that? These pagan holidays. Why have that? Well, some because it's uh, because of a lack of knowledge. All right, and don't know what was going on. All right. Um, Tiffany says uh, she celebrate the Passover instead of Easter. All right, good. All right, and so and, and that's and that's the thing about it. So in other words, once we, we have to learn the truth about what's really going on with, with these holidays. All right, now us we've never celebrated Easter. All right, because we knew what Easter was, so we never celebrated Easter. All right, uh, we celebrate the resurrection. All right, Passover, all that good stuff. Some people go to full week with Holy Week, with uh, Ash Wednesday and Monday, Tuesday, and all that, Monday, Thursday, and all of that stuff like that. Um, and that's good. All right, but uh, we don't celebrate. So, what happened was uh, all of these pagan holidays started in Rome, um, a lot of them. All right, and then they started in Rome. And so, when Constantine came into rule, all right, Constantine ordered that Christianity would be the national re uh, religion. But at the same time, Constantine didn't put away a lot of the paganism that was going on. And so what happened down the line, some of the paganism got mixed up with the Christian festivals and feasts and different things like that. And so and the people, you know, as it goes down the line, it just tradition would have it. Hey, we celebrate Easter on this day. All right. And then we, we go to church. We put on our lime green suits and our hot pink shoes and, you know, and our uh, purple neon hat. And we go to church and, and we celebrate Easter. We bring our Easter basket with our eggs and our bunny rabbits and all that good stuff. And we and we celebrate Easter. All right. And that's out of ignorance. All right. But that's not what that's not what it's all about. Easter bunnies, Easter eggs, um, hot pink soups don't have anything to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All right. Don't have anything to do with it. All right. So what's happened is. Michael Monroe said they wanted to give the pagans something as a compromise. Exactly. All right. And they want to give the pagans something to compromise because if you notice anything that the believer does or that Christ does, that God does, Satan tries to imitate it. All right. And so along with the Christians, so when, with Constantine, he put he, he made Christianity the national religion, but he did not put away a lot of the paganism. And so that stuff still was there. And, and they began to intertwine and interme intermingle with the two. All right. Uh, in elementary school, we used to have uh, field day. And they still have field day. And I don't know if they still do this or not. Um, they used to have the, the maypole, you know, and everybody grabbed the ribbon and they go around and up and down and on and over and all that. And that's, that's fertility to an, to an idol god. All right. We didn't know that. All right. But it was just looked like a fun thing to do. So there are a lot of things that we do in life that are out of ignorance and not knowing what's really going on with it. But Easter is a, a God or deity uh, of paganism. All right. It is, um, I'm looking at the wrong one. Easter is a celebration of the spring of the nor Northern Hemisphere. It is called, um, the God is called P Paschal or Ishtar or it's a sex goddess by the name of Easter, all right? Spelled I-S-H-T-A-R. Right, and so that's And what they sacrificed babies. They sacrificed babies in the fire, all right, during this particular time. And so, and that's what Easter was all about according to the Roman paganism, all right? And that's where Easter is. And then the, the Easter egg and the Easter bunny is a symbol of the fertility to this God, to this sex God, all Just right? think about it, women have eggs, when we're, um, in order for us to be able to conceive, those eggs are germinated, right? Or, or their um, sperm has to, in order, they're germinated, right? So they're in the womb of the woman. So you think about the eggs, Easter eggs, it was a fertility god. Uh, and so they turn around and they, they uh, perverted it with the mm. eggs and a bunny. Okay, right. so now we're hunting after these Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's fertility unto, unto that false god. So that's why we don't celebrate Easter. All right, Dr. J, you have something? She clapping. Okay, she's clapping. No, I was just agreeing. Thank you. 
<laughs> okay. All right. And so, and, and and there you have it. So they that that portion of it is is the is the is a false worship to an idol god. All right. To a sex goddess by the name of Ishtar, or in some cases called Easter. All right. And that's why we don't worship that. All right. But what the Christians worship or celebrate, should I say, is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All right. It is his resurrection. It's a is is when we set aside a time to um celebrate his resurrection all right because that's what freed us that's what made us free all right but now some argue and say well should it be done the same time as easter i don't know i don't know if um that the, the resurrection celebration uh was there first or the bunny rabbit situation now michael said because the word is actually mentioned in the bible that it was around the time of easter. around the time okay thank you for that brother all right, so it was around that time. So we have to decide in ourselves, are we gonna choose not to celebrate it uh, because of the time frame in which it was in, or we make a distinction on what we celebrate, all right? So when we go for, we, we're not celebrating Easter, all right? All right, and, and we don't have no bunny rabbits and eggs, but we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right, so it's the, in, the intention, the motive, and what you're worshiping. And so, and it's just like, um, I heard somebody say it last night, and you know, we've taught on witchcraft and all of that through deliverance. And it's just like candles when we take you guys through deliverance and, and you say, and we say, you know, do you have any candles in your house? And you'll say, well, I got candles from Bath and Body Works. I got candles from Walmart. So it's not the fact of having a, cam a candle that, that you use for fragrant, fragrance, but if you're using that candle as a form of ritual, um, a form of witchcraft or anything like that, that's when it becomes an issue. And so even with e Easter, and Resurrection Sunday, it was about that time that Jesus was resurrected. And so people, so the world uses it, paganism uses it as Easter, as a time to celebrate the Easter bunny. We understand and we operate underneath the fact that it is Resurrection Sunday. And so we're celebrating the fact that our Savior died and he got up for us. Amen. Right. I'm like you, Dr. J. I cringe in the church when people start when people get up saying Easter, but have all the customs, customs in place in remembrance of the resurrection. All right. Now, so um, there you have it. All right. So it's it's not right to celebrate Easter. All right. According to the scripture, because it is a pagan celebration. So we don't celebrate Easter. We as believers, we celebrate the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All right? So Okay. So I have a question, not so much for me, but just for inquiring minds when it comes to the Passover. Are we are we held accountable, or is it um, bad if we don't go through the whole Passover feast and all that? Because not every Christian, we may celebrate Resurrection, mm -hmm. we may honor the fact that Passover um, is a good thing, and you know you can do it. But because you don't do it, is mm -hmm. it a bad thing, or does it mean you have to do Passover? Well, according to the Scripture, we're not mandated to to um, uphold those feasts and festivals. All right, it was it was a give it was it was a, a custom. Uh, and a mandate given to the, the Jewish culture, all right? And I know that by faith, we are Jews, all right? We are Jews by faith, all right? And so, um, and, and we are we were Gentiles that were um, uh, grafted into the faith, all right? We, we were grafted into this thing, all right? So we, we, we were uh, on, on the Gentile side. So these, these festivals were kept, all right? But again, like I said, we're, we're in the new covenant, all right? So now, all right. I forgot, I almost forgot my point where I was going to. All right. So no, we, we as believers, we do not celebrate Easter. All right. It is a pagan worship. We don't celebrate Easter. All right. Um, like I said, Easter is a celebration. It was a celebration according to the Rome of the spring of the Northern uh, Hemisphere. All right. Under the God Paschal or Ishtar and the sex goddess fertility, uh, which was Easter. All right, so we do not celebrate um, the um, Easter situation. Like I said, bunny rabbits and high color suits and uh, and uh, Easter baskets and all that stuff. Eggs don't have anything to do with the resurrection. All right, right so, we, so, so it don't have anything to do with God in general, not the God that we serve, the true and the living God. All right. Any questions there? Yeah, I want to hear some responses. Some... Any questions? Anybody want to add to? I don't know how to do the raised hand thing, y'all. I'm like, <laughs> I'll okay. do this. You, you um, just did it. 
<laughs> I'm just learning. I'm just glad to be here. I'm learning. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. There's a lot of people that don't know it. You know, there's a lot of people that don't know it, and so um, that's why it's good to to have people you know that are teaching it to implement it into their yeah. service. And then there's some that will not break away from the old tradition. You know, there's some you can talk to them and you know and, and say it to them and, and let them know and let them see it for themselves in the Word of God, and they will fight you tooth and nail that. You know, they're not going to stop. And there's some that won't teach it because they don't want to lose people, because there are a lot of people that believe that it's okay. Because some people be like, oh, it's harmless, you know. And that's the thing, like, they won't celebrate Halloween, but they'll celebrate Easter. And they say, oh, it's harmless. It's just, you know, we're just getting some eggs. Mm -hmm. But you're, but it's the tradition and it's the paganism behind what you're doing. And so you're coming into agreement with, when you act out the tradition, you're coming into agreement with it. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Open my eyes with okay. that, especially with Halloween. I was like totally shook when he took the scales off my eyes on Halloween. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've ever even celebrated it. Yeah. And Amen. and that's uh, that's all of us to some extent. Yeah. We have all until we knew what was right and wrong. Right. Yeah. And that's why we thank God for grace and mercy because while we're living in error, unaware, you know, God is still keeping us and giving us his grace to where we can learn of him. And we can know what's right and wrong and what things are hurtful and harmful to us and what things uh, would benefit us. Sarita said the church is getting turned upside down. Yes, it is. Amen. 48 hours. (laughs) 48 hours. Yes, now. I I fell out when I I read that. (laughs) You got 48 hours. Three days. Go ahead, uh, April. Sorry, y'all, man. I was listening, but I was putting a little boy to sleep. Got to hide B. Oh, yeah. Um, Man, y'all saying some good stuff, but I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> That's that I had something to say, but I forgot. He's going to give it back to you. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> It'll come back to you. Go ahead, Fallon. I was just going to make a comment. So this, uh, we used to do holidays. Um, I even did it, like my son, he's 17. Even with Angel, she's seven. I did that with, you know, holidays with her, like Christmas, all that. But um, this will be our third year that we haven't. But I'd say what's hard is like um, the family coming against us because they'll always tell us like, oh, you're like taking stuff away from the babies because you know you're not doing this with them and so I feel like we do get a lot of persecution like through the family um and and just the world like when we say that we don't participate in the holidays um and especially having kids so I think that's something that's hard to deal with sometimes amen gotcha. yeah it is difficult sometimes with family that don't believe the way that you do you know uh we had a, a instance on this last Halloween um one of our kids' friend, um, the kids went to their house and 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 as soon as they got there the, and we dropped them off, the mother was getting ready to take them to a haunted house. You know, and our kids being, you know, raised up in a house of deliverance, they're like, oh no, we don't do that. You know, no, nah, we don't do that. We can't do that. So you have to my, take us home. My daughter said, <laughs> my daughter said, I, my daughter said, um, my mom and dad are spi- are real spiritual. So mm-hmm. they don't allow us to participate. I said, we're not spiritual. <laughs> we're just, we just don't participate, you know, like, I understood what she was trying to say, but I was like, you know, some people take spiritual out of the way too. She's like, oh no, we're not allowed to do that. You know, we have to go home. And so I was like, good. And so the thing, this is the thing, guys, if you teach your children, the Bible holds us, we are the ones that impart into our children when it comes to spirituality, okay? When it comes to God and the things of God, it's our responsibility to impart into them. And so if you train them up that way, then they don't have, they don't have an issue with being different. When it came time for Halloween, my set, my eight-year-old and 10-year-old did not ask me about going trick-or-treating. That, w- that was not a discussion in our house because they already know that's not what we do. Now, I'll be honest with you. Um, when, I was, when I was a child, my mom took us one time. Mm-hmm. She wanted us to understand what it was about, what it was like, and that was it. She never took us again. As I got older, being that I was a young mom, I had my first child at 18, 17 or 18, I took them one time. That was it. And then I was convicted of it. I never took them again. And so my youngest ones, I don't think they have ever been. And me, I was just always like, I'm not going to no fall festival. I'm not going to any of that because all of that is just kind of like, just trying to cover it up. You know, I'm not doing a trunk or tree. 
I'm not doing a, a, a church of wing, no nothing. You know, hallelujah night, not doing none of it because I don't feel like I have to substitute anything for them. It's either we do it or we don't do it. And so that's just not a holiday that we participated in because of what it represented. And my kids know it and they're fine with it. And the thing is, they tell other people. And sometimes I have to get them because we're so open and honest with our children that they are that way with their friends. And then I'm like, you know, your friends might not understand. Like you understand. I mean, we would go in Dollar General shopping one time on a Halloween night. We were getting something and some people were in line dressed up in a costume. My daughter turned around and the lady was like, oh, y'all didn't go trick or treat tonight. And my daughter's like, no, we don't believe in it. It's the devil's holiday. And the lady looked and she was like, well, I don't believe, you know, I, you know, I don't serve the devil. We were just doing it at the church or something they tried to say, but the kids are just blunt. They're like, we don't do it, you know? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> April, you had something? You did it come back? Yeah, we all were talking about Easter. I got your next call. I see. Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. When y'all was talking about Easter, I was thinking about I saw on YouTube um this uh the history of a, a bunch of the holidays, and it was talking about Ish, I think her name was Ishtar. Ishtar. Ishtar, and that's where Easter came from, and talking about the one of the the sons of uh, Noah's son, how all of it was just demonic, and how she she had that whole egg thing, and so if you go far enough back, when I look when I read that, it blew me away because a lot of of the religions and stuff they come from what we know is demonic, but if you go far enough back, you know those three no one of Noah's three sons was the one that linked back up with the demonic. And then right. from there, right. so because there was never a religion. Right. Even though you know that, like you're sometimes it takes a minute, like there was never a religion. The God did not have, have to name it anything. Right. It was right. just me, my people, right. you know? So even from the very beginning, there was, anyway. So I just want to say that thing was so cool. If y'all on YouTube, it broke it down, down like with cartoons and, um, um, is it undisputed truth or something like that? Because that's what I, I got think so. From. Yeah. yeah, he's really. That's what I watched that one too. He's whole doctor. He's serious on it. I mean, a kid could understand it the way he broke it down. Amen. That's good. That's that's good. That's good. And uh, and it, and it, and it's really it's true. That's that's it's it derived back then and and seeing all the time like she said, God didn't intend for us to have a religion. God just wanted us to be His people and Him to be, to be right our God. With him. You know, and even with uh with. With the, with the kingship, you know, the people wanted a king. God didn't desire for them to have a king because he was their king. And he said, okay, well, they're, all they're going to do is tax you and put burdens on your shoulders. So and, uh, there you have it. I'll give you a king. And that's what they got. And so, and we're living in the results of that now. All right, Claude, Brother Claude, you have something? Um, not really. I was just going to comment on the, uh, the Halloween thing. Like they try to slip it in at places like, you know, you don't go to Hana houses and this and that and participate in trick or treat and so on and so forth. But they still try to slip it in. Like there'll be little pumpkins, you know what I'm saying? They'll have like jack o' lanterns and spots and this and that and da da da. And, and, you know, different places, they still try to slip it in, even though, you know, you say, oh, I don't participate, da da da. And be like, you know, the same thing. Oh, it's just, oh, y'all, like she said, y'all robbing the kids of the, that's the candy and blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's right. slick. You you gotta right. you gotta really keep your eyes open because because people are slick. And I don't right. know if they if they do it on purpose or if it's just like lack of knowledge. Yeah, yeah, it's just the lack of knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Because it's it's really right. slick. Because like I said, they'll be they'll be like it'll be a jack o' lantern sitting on the church steps. You know? And I'm like, wait, what? Like right. that's, that's no. You know, and they're like, oh, well, we don't celebrate Halloween, da, 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 but y'all still partaking in some of the activities, you know what I'm saying? which make right. you just as guilty, like you were saying earlier. But that's all I was going to say. All right. That was good stuff. All right. Anybody else before we move? Anybody else? Okay. What's the next one? All right. So let's move along. All right. So we, we got Easter out of the way. And I saw in, in the chat that there was a couple saying about Valentine's Day. Um, yeah, we don't do the Valentine's thing either and all that good stuff. Um, then another one was, okay, is it okay for the Christians to celebrate Christmas? All right, now this is a biggie right here because we are considered Christians and should we celebrate Christmas? All right, 
Anybody want to want to give a jab at it before we go? Before we go into it, what what your thoughts are on it? My thoughts um, would be no. Okay. Why would that? Why why would you say no? Um, I'm drawing a blank right now, but from what I remember is that's another god, like how Easter was. Um, mm -hmm. It was another pagan holiday. Yeah, it's another uh, pagan holiday of. I'm forgetting the god that it is though. Yeah, I can't remember. They had, there was some sort of celebration. Um, I've looked it up. It was some sort of celebration, something to do with the winter solstice. Um, mm -hmm. da da, and like New Year's Eve is included in that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was. Uh, but there there was something to do with. It was a pagan. It was a pagan holiday, and why they do Christmas trees and the little balls on the Christmas trees and this and that and da da da. Like I looked into that for a while because, um, you know, we was about to have kids, and I was like, well, I like Christmas. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I get to buy stuff for the kids and this and that and da 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 da. Right? And then we get to looking it up, and I'm like, oh man, like we've been getting duped forever. And not only that, I always wonder what. Um, I always wondered why, uh, the tradition of doing certain things. You know what I'm saying? Like, why why do we do these things? Like, you know, I just get to looking it up. And then, right. you know, I ask questions to people and, you know, people don't feel the same way or whatever. And, and they persecute you and it's just horrible. And, then, right. you know, I don't know. But you about to give me some facts. So okay. that's all. Awesome. <laughs> oh, you're, you're on it. You're on it. You're on it. Uh, Destiny? Um, I was going to say the same thing that Fallon and Claude said because of the background of it, like being pagan and all the other stuff that they were talking about the other gods. Um, that's what I learned about it. And I know that like um, how like with Easter, it was really about your motives or your intention on who you were um, celebrating that day. Um, <clears throat> except... I just, because it also didn't exactly like, it, cause it really wasn't like Jesus birthday or something like that. Then I was just like, mm, is that something that people are saying so that they like, I don't know, not have an excuse, but just something to like back it up with and say, well, it really is like Christian or something like that to celebrate. So like, I kind of was leaning toward not really we, like maybe it might be okay but it might not be okay at the same time i don't know right okay all right anybody else well for me um i know when i first started getting into ministry when god ministered to me i idolized christmas <laughs> so it was my joy. It was my happiness. It was what I looked for my, um, my season to be excited. And God had tested my spirit to see if I would break away from it. And he stripped me from enjoying Christmas and told me to stop celebrating. He tested my obedience and he revealed to me, I have to find my notebook um, so I could give you the exact scriptures that God sent me to, but he informed me, you know, when you bring in up, you know, how the devil mirrors everything God does. Yeah, you know, the tree of life, the tree is to live. And when we chop down a tree, we're bringing the death, you're killing off a tree and you're bringing it into your home. Um, something about it upside down, uh, how people put it on their their house and the water and it kills off the leaves and then you're just opening up portals for death. Um, and something else about debt, like we, we spend all our money trying to buy our children a billion gifts and giving it to uh, 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 unrealistic men, telling our kids that Santa Claus, which is Satan spelled backwards, <laughs> um, you know, and lying to our children, you know, we're bringing in the lies, we're bringing in Satan, all types of stuff that we're bringing deception and debt into our homes. And then the rest of the year, we're praying, asking God to clean off the debt that we allow the devil to deceive our minds with. So um, when God was ministering to me, he was giving me his reasons why he was against the celebration of Christmas and the deception of lies of that the devil has used to 
bring the lights onto his son, Jesus, and make us believe that it was for the celebration of his birthday when there's no evidence in the Bible about the true date of Jesus' birth. So we are not to just go off of just believing that because, um, well, when I was asking God about Jesus' birthday, and he just told me, look at the animals that was in the season of my son's birthday, and um, it doesn't line up with December. So it was a lot of reasons, but I have to go through my notes. I screenshot and send it to y'all when I find my notes, but that's why I don't celebrate it. God set me down on it. I had to repent. I had to get rid of everything that I spent a lot of money on. And since then, I've just been repenting and I haven't celebrated it. And a lot of my family has been trying to convict me and like Fallon said about throwing the children in and what are you, look at what you're doing to the kids. And it was just, you know, trying to get me to fall back into the routine of mixing in with the worldly ways. And I just haven't given in. And I notice when I don't celebrate Christmas and I'm obedient to the word throughout the remaining of the year, my house is blessed more. Um, so I just don't celebrate it because of that reason. So I'm against it. All right. Um, I don't know who was first, April or Dr. J. Uh, I think April was. Um, I think I remember a long time ago, I thought Christmas, I'm not sure if this is what winter solstice is, but it was like a sexual type of thing that they got together. It was like some type of orgy type. There's something sexual about the history of Christmas, if I remember right. And the tree and the bulbs and stuff were somehow connected to it. Uh, I've always felt weird about the tree. I never, I never really put the tree in. I never, I don't ever do the tree. Actually, I don't even, I don't, haven't done it. And I never really could understand why I didn't because I used to go back and forth with myself. Like, is there something wrong with Christmas? Is there not? So that's all I'm okay. going to say. I can't wait to hear what y'all going to tell us because. All right. What, Dr. J? <laughs> Um, I don't celebrate Christmas, but I do think that as the church, meaning us, the, the physical body, not the building, that all of these pagan holidays are opportunities for us to be the church and to show the world who the church really is. And so whether it's Easter, which is Resurrection Sunday or, or Christmas, it's the time that we remember that Jesus was born, whether he was born or not, it's an opportunity for us to show the world who we really are. Um, if the church never stands up, then how is the world going to know? And so I use that time to do things that, um, and I've always raised my son this way. I've never put up a tree or lights, or, I mean, if you do, you know, um, do what works for you. I never have, but I've used that time to, we go visit homeless shelters, um, or we go, you know, do food, um, give out meals, give out socks and blankets and, and things like that. Um, and the same for a resurrection Sunday, no eggs or anything are going to be in my house. He's not getting a basket, nothing, but, um, I have put it in the chat where to train a, a child in the way they should go. And so that includes these types of customs. We have to plant these seeds in our children while they are young so that when they get older, and we start dying out as the church that then they spring up and they teach, you know, for generations to come. So those are my beliefs. All right. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome responses. Awesome responses. All right. And, and you guys said a lot of good things. I, and um, April said she was going, couldn't wait to see what uh, we had to say, but you guys pretty much said everything that we were going to say. And um, again, to go back to the initial scriptures that we gave in the beginning, you know, it's all about uh, discerning the heart of God concerning these issues, all right, you know, um, and, and the motives. Now, when it comes to paganism, we don't participate in paganism at all, and so, and that's why these kinds of platforms, these kinds of teachings and understandings are very important and detrimental to the body of Christ, because there are a lot of people, they're doing it not because they're uh, uh, willingly or uh, or participating in paganism is that a lot of people don't know they don't they don't have a knowledge of or an understanding of and um and like i said with constantine how the, all these things got mixed up because he made 
Christianity, the national uh, religion, but he didn't take away a lot of the paganism and all of it got intertwined together. And, you know, and, and then they're happening in the same seasons and, and different things like that, uh, like the Easter and then the, uh, the celebration of the resurrection. And, and then uh, with Christmas, you know, uh, and, and instead of Christmas, the church shouldn't be celebrating Christmas but it should be celebrating the nativity of Jesus Christ. And, um, and, the, uh, and, the, and the original celebration was not to celebrate the birth date of Christ. It was to celebrate the birth of Christ, the fact of him being born into the world. So it's not a specific date that we're, we celebrate, but it's the actual celebrating the birth of him being birthed into the earth. And so, and, and so in this season, and so then how it became perverted and intertangled with the with the Christmas is that with the Christmas tree. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse two through five. Can somebody put that in the chat? Jeremiah chapter 10, verse two through five. All right. And so, and, and, the, and a lot of you said something about the tree. So that's that's where it is in scripture when it's talking about the, the Christmas tree. All right, Jeremiah 10, chapter two, verse, uh, chapter 10, verse uh, two through five. Reading from the English Standard Version again. And the Bible reads, actually, the way mine is, I got to start with one. But hear the word that the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the peoples are vanity. A tree from the forest is cut down and worked with an axe by the hands of a craftsman. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails so that it cannot move. Their idols are like scarecrows in a, cum in a cucumber. cucumber field and they cannot speak. They have to be carried for they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of them for they cannot do evil. Neither is it in them to do good. Amen. So in other words, that was a pagan practice that was done and they used the tree to do that. They would cut down a tree at the far out of the forest fasten it with nails and they would decorate it with gold and silver and different things like that and that was an idol that was made into this god that they were serving all right and so that that was intermingled into the christmas thing and also uh what we have uh, the giving of gifts we give we go out and as uh latoya said we'll broke uh trying to get our kids these xboxes playstations dirt bikes four wheelers cars what they just got some some of them ask for houses now. I mean, they just ask for some outrageous stuff. <laughs> and, and when we're scraping and getting loans and going into debt and all kind of stuff to try to make this happen for them. And then if we can't make it happen, then we're full of guilt, you know, that we couldn't do this for our children. All right. And so that's the downside of the paganism of it, because the pagans always try to do what God did. And so with the nativity, all right, we didn't worship the tree. We worship the tree of life. Jesus Christ, all right? And we did not give gifts to the children, but they, they brought gifts to Jesus, mm -hmm. all right? So that's what the real nativity was all about, is giving gifts to Jesus, all right, and celebrating his birth into the earth, all right, that the Messiah had come, the one that was promised through the prophets has now finally come into the earth to be with men, to be among men. And so that's the celebration, uh, the true celebration of that season, not not uh, the one that we're talking about in um uh, uh, I think it was Claude that was on, and it, it was a, a Roman celebration of the winter of Saltus. Uh, the feast is called Salter, Saltinalia, all right? And um, and it was a, a celebration to worship or to idol gods, all right? And so we don't, we don't participate in that, and we shouldn't participate in that. And so it's confusing, like I said, because it's done at the same, on the same days, all right? And, and that could be, a, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, that knowledgeable in it, but it could have been um, that, you know, it was purposely done on the same day or something like that to cause that confusion or whatever. I don't know. All right. But all I know is this, is that uh, we have to know what we're celebrating. All right. And as uh, Dr. J said, Dr. J said, it's a wonderful, it was a wonderful opportunity to let the world know what we stand for and what we celebrate and, and that we celebrate the true God, the true and the living God and not these false idols who are like scarecrows on a cucumber field that can't make no noise, can't do anything for you, can't answer you if you call on them, can't come to your rescue, all right? So we we have to uh, look at that, all right? And so, and like I said, it's just, it's just the motive in the heart of how we look at it, but we do not participate in paganism, but we uh, have a distinct separation on what we do. Like I said, 
us, our ministry, we from day one, we never celebrated Easter, all right? We only celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, all right? At Christmas, we don't celebrate Christmas. We celebrate the nativity, right. the birth of Jesus Christ, all right? That's what we celebrate, all right. right? Even in our household, our children, my mother raised us that there was no Santa Claus. Um, when we were little kids, I think maybe five, maybe I was five or so, my mom would, you know, we thought it was a Santa Claus and she would dress up like Santa Claus and all that stuff. But as we got older, we learned that it was not Santa Claus, it was Jesus, um, and we were celebrating his birth. And so even when it came to um, our children, we've raised our children that way. And so I'm like, um, Dr. J, not that we celebrate pagan holidays, but we use it as a time. Because the thing is, like she said, there are people that celebrate it, so we have to be the light in the midst of darkness. That's our motto for our ministry light in a dark world and so we have to use those just like fallon was speaking about halloween she wanted to go out while they were having a halloween festival and share the gospel lift up signs show them you know talk to them about god and why they shouldn't celebrate halloween and so that's what we do and not that and we feed people year round we clothe people year round we we sow into people's lives year round but during those times when people are really looking for something to take place we also go out and we you know we, it's been times where um there's a place here in fairville tiffany um, knows what I'm talking about. It's the heart of Fayetteville and they call it the market house. It actually was where slaves were sold back in the day and they still have this marketplace there. Long discussion and they, it's just there and people hate it. It's a sore eye for the community, a lot of the community, but we have went down there many times and have preached underneath the market house and it's downtown where all the homeless people are and we would set up and we would have food, we would have clothes, socks, hats, scarves, jackets, whatever they needed, hygiene products, and we would preach the gospel. And I remember preaching down there um, um, one one night, and you know, people were getting saved and coming to Christ. And so it's a it's it's an opportunity to be able to minister the right thing in a wrong moment, if that makes sense. And so even with our children. I won't, I won't lie to you. There were for some years, I did celebrate Christmas to the point to where I would rack my mind going broke, like Latoya said, to buy gifts for my children, only to realize that same night they were done with those toys. The next day, they were done with them toys. They didn't care about those toys as much as I cared about them as far as trying to break my bank account to go get them. They cared nothing about that stuff. And so I don't even waste time to even try to do all of that. They know I love them. They know that materialistic things do not make my relationship with them or break it. And they know the true reason behind the season. And so that's what we celebrate. Right. Brother Brother Michael Monroe says Christmas come from the Christmas was a heathen festival observed December 24th through 25th in honor of the Babylonian queen Ashtar and the Chaldeans called it Yule Day or a child day, hence the Yule Day log. And, right. and then Fallon also said, shouldn't we celebrate the birth of Jesus every day? We should yes, through our should. life. All right, but it, it, you know, they, they, they made it a national time, all right, to set aside a day nationally to do it. So, but yes, every day should be a celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ into the world, all right? Um, Ashley? And then Taylor had a question too, and then Destiny. Okay. Um, what was I going to ask? What about like, so you guys cleared that up for me good. Um, but for decorations, so we celebrate tree of life. So we're celebrating, you know, the birth of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Would it, so I have like a nativity scene, like, is that, would that be okay? Or like, how do you guys feel about like the decorations? Cause I know a tree is not good at, you know, at this point. Um, mm -hmm. yeah and um i've seen some i, I would say that it you know is is personal choice personal conviction yeah. with that. um i um i personally have seen even that in in era in a lot of people's yard i've seen somewhere they had the manger and then they had the wise men on one side and then they had the shepherds on the other side you know and that's not even scriptural it's within itself because you know the the uh, wise men went to the star led them to Herod's house, and the uh, and the uh, star led the shepherds to where Jesus was. Uh, so it was even a, a, a distinct difference in that. So it's, it's all in coming to the knowledge of the truth, um, and 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 where and where your heart is, you know. And and yeah. man, like I said, some of these rituals and and these ceremonial things that we do, uh, they're paganistic, and, and we have to get away, we have to move away from that. 
and, and, and not do those things because we're if we do the ceremony or the ritual, then we're participating in the sin of it. So uh, we have to separate ourselves from that. All right. Um, who else was up there? Uh, um, Lord just kind of told me not to do nothing until he gives me a clear answer. So I just, I just feel not, I'm not going to do nothing until I get a clear answer. <laughs> all right. The, um, Taylor had a question and I forgot who else. Who else had their hand up? Destiny. Destiny had her hand up unless you answered it. Destiny, was your hand up? Yeah, it was. Did we answer your question? Um, maybe a little bit. What you need? What was your question, baby? Um, my question was like, you know how you guys are saying, um, like it's about your like your heart and the motive behind what you're celebrating, and that's understandable. But then I was kind of wondering, is the, um kind of like then wouldn't like trunk or tree or like the fall festivals at church during Halloween be okay because they wouldn't be if, especially if you like know God and you're not doing it for like demonic reasons or whatnot like mm -hmm. what but then yeah. is it well, that the basis at a holiday is demonic yeah and the other stuff isn't for, for me, my perspective on it is the basis of that holiday is demonic. So I don't think you can, there's nothing you can do to, to turn it. You can give it a different name, but the origin is still the same. Right. If you don't participate in the rituals. Of it. And, okay. the, and the rituals of it, he's saying, if you don't participate in the rituals of it, but like for, for me with Easter, there's Easter and then there's Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday, that's scriptural. He mm -hmm. got up. And mm -hmm. so you know, we're celebrating the fact that Jesus got up. When you go back to, um, when you study like the Jewish calendar and all of that, the days and all of that stuff, you would have to go back and really study the history. The days and all that are different than our days. The times are different yeah. than our times because their clock wasn't even like our clock. Um, they had different timings, different days. Their days started on, a, on um, one day was 12 hours. Yeah, one day was 12 hours for them. The morning and the evening was the first day. And so they've convert, so it's been converted over into our time, our day, but but it's the same season. Cause like he said in the Bible, it says it was around, about around Easter. So it was about around that tank, that time of the pagan, where the pagans celebrated okay. Easter or had Easter. It was about that time where resurrection took place. And so that's why we celebrate resurrection. But for Halloween, there there's nothing to yeah. Well, and see, and another thing too, we can't let uh, a pagan holiday dictate what we stand for in Christ. All right, even though it's on that day, if if we are a believer and we choose to celebrate something else outside of that, as long as we're not participating in what they do and the rituals that they do it in, that day is for everybody. All right, that sun came up that morning and shined on the just as well as unjust. So we have a right to celebrate what we want, when we want. If I want to celebrate, you know, the, the nativity tomorrow, I can do that tomorrow. You know, it, it doesn't it have to be a certain day. All right. Uh, Elvira. Yes, I was going to say this. I'm hearing a lot of people say it's been like kind of hard with families and pulling away from the tradition because of families. And I was listening to John Ramirez. His breakdown was, when you are a believer, you have to be bold in what you believe in because you wouldn't dare catch a witch or a, a mm -hmm. warlock celebrating, the, you know, the birth of Christ. So why would you, as a believer, disrespect your Savior and celebrate a pagan holiday? Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and I think that sometimes with us, it's, it seems like it's always harder for Christians than it is for those who, who are... Um, believers of Satan or followers of Satan, like for them, whatever they put into place, that's it. That's law for them. That's guidelines for them. And they don't contradict it. They don't, um, they don't go against it. It's like, they're all in and they don't care who you, who you are, what you say, what you think, but we're the ones that always have to, um, have to overthink everything. We have to appease everybody or please everybody. And we want, um, and we want that affirmation or that we want people to come into agreement with our thoughts. But if if we really truly know who we are in God, we don't need anybody's opinion. We don't need anybody's 
confirmation, affirmation when it comes to what we believe and knowing that God has told us to do something specific. Even when it comes to just being a Christian alone, the Bible says that we're in the world, not of the world. And so we have to be okay with not looking like the world. We have to be okay with not doing what the world does because we have been what called to be sanctified. To be sanctified means to be set apart. We're set apart. We're not the same. And so we cannot get upset when the world does not agree with what we do, how we act, our thoughts. Just again, remember we were talking the other week and I was like, the Bible says if someone slaps you on one cheek to turn to the other side, let them slap you there. By the world standards, that doesn't make sense. The world standards, if you slap me, I'm going to shoot you. If you slap me, we're going to fight. But God said, if they hit you on one side, you turn to us. That was the, that was what he was speaking in the word of God. And so it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It was metaphorically. It was metaphorically, but it doesn't make sense. But the thing is, what we've been called to do as Christians is not going to always settle with the world because why one they're spiritually blind so they they don't even understand the things of god two they're spiritually deaf they can't even hear god okay and so we have to be comfortable with the decisions that we make we have to be solid in our foundation we have to be solid um in what we have what god has spoken to us and what we have read and what we understand amen right. and we don't owe anybody an apology and we don't now i'm not talking about in general just in life but i'm talking about when it comes to because we, we should always be quick to apologize and repent but i'm speaking in reference to how we raise our children um you know how we live our life as christians we shouldn't have to apologize and and you know come up with reasons why we do what we do that this is this is who i am this is what god says we should do and that's it that settles it right like Paul said in Romans chapter 14, if one man hold one day, esteem one day higher than the other, you know, then let that man, as long as he's persuaded in his own mind, hey, let him be. You know, it says that God's welcome them both. So, you know, um, but like I said, when it comes to crossing the line of paganism, we have to be careful with that. And we and we can't cross those lines. All right. Um, I see Taylor. Taylor, you got something? And then April. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to say, um, I've read a little bit uh, throughout the Bible and I can't find anything about, you know, celebrating Christmas, Valentine's Day or anything like that. Like, I mean, like, my thing is, is if it's not in the Bible and Jesus and God or Paul or John or Peter or anyone throughout the Bible, you know, if they didn't talk about it, you know, in my opinion, we shouldn't really celebrate it. But the thing that I'm scratching my head at is Thanksgiving is is that okay? He wanted to eat some turkey. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> that was a joke. All right. Now, when it when it comes to Thanksgiving, all right. I, if someone else has answered that, I'll let them answer it. Um, I haven't fully researched that one, uh, but if someone else has it, I would do that. All right. Now, um, April, April. That's who's next. We'll get back to you Well, I think this is kind of related to what we're saying, but I think it isn't. I think it is. I don't know, but it just reminded me of when I learned that Jesus, his name isn't really Jesus, that they changed his name. The Romans changed his name. His, you know, mm -hmm. you know, his name really is uh, Yeshua, Yeshua, you know, Yahweh, Yahweh. So when I found that out, um, I was like, so Lord, you, you know, I've been calling you this name. Mm -hmm. That's not really your name, but when mm -hmm. we cast out demons, you still honor that name. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When I say in the name of Jesus, they still do. And I was like, once again, Lord, you're amazing at the fact that it's not even your name, but you still mm -hmm. honor it because you mm -hmm. know who were, you know, from knowing the inward parts of us that we're talking to you mm -hmm. and so it's like because sometimes you know you want to be careful not to miss the forest what's that saying you want to miss the forest from the trees, the trees. or from the trees from the forest you know what i'm saying you miss the yeah. bigger picture so it's like right what destiny was saying about trunk and tr trunk or treat and all that, i don't take a minus to it because what we y'all pastor what y'all are saying but at the same time i'm like I wonder if God is still looking at the heart of it 
he when is. churches and stuff do it. You know what I'm saying? Like he knows yeah. that they're not, my internet's not working y'all. Now nah, I don't want to work. But <laughs> he still you. knows that they're not, okay. Right. Yeah. So and, I guess and, it and all goes back to the heart too. And I think even right. with, and I could be wrong, Lord, if, if I'm wrong, Jesus, like with Christmas, you know what I'm saying? Like we know, mm-hmm. once you know the truth, it's hard right. to, to retract. Like once you know, it's hard. Right. But right. for Christians that are still like coming along, I think God still knows they're not worshiping the tree. They're not intentionally, right. but still, here's the thing though, with intention, the enemy doesn't stop with intention, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Intention doesn't stop the enemy. So, so the thing is, their heart, their heart's in the right place if they don't know. Now, if they know the truth and, and refuse the truth and and don't accept the truth, that's one thing. But if they don't know the truth or they haven't been convicted of it in that manner, then right. the thing is, because some people truly, so I've heard people, I've been a part of churches that did it because they didn't want the kids to go out and trick or treat. They wanted to keep them safe. They mm-hmm. wanted to give them a place during that time of safety. To, mm-hmm. um, so in other words, they were like, I know these parents are going to take them. So to keep them from taking them, we're going to do something at a church that's wholesome. We mm-hmm. know the candy is good. That's mm-hmm. their intent. And so that's why even when I was posting the other day or yesterday or today, I can't even remember now, but I was saying, you know, some things we fight about that's really not needed um, mm-hmm. as far as fighting. If you know the truth, fine. If you're not convicted of that truth that someone else knows, then let's not make an argument about it. But let's right. keep it moving because souls need to be one. And so during that time of arguing and debating and 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 just tearing up the word of God, we could be somewhere winning a soul for Christ because Jesus is coming and people are dying and right. going to hell. Right. And so. Right. That, that's my thing there. And that's good in what you're saying because that's true. God knows who we are and he knows who we're worshiping. And like you said, you know, with the letter J not being in back then, it was Yeshua, you know, mm-hmm. and all of that. It is true because when you learn the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is who he is. Mm-hmm. All right. Just like in the Jewish culture, in that time, biblical days, when, they, when a person was named something, it was based upon their destiny of who they were, their purpose. All right. Oh. And so and when you say the name Jesus, even though it's Yeshua, you know, um, he knows exactly who you're talking to. All right. Mm-hmm. Just like in, 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 in the opposite of that, he says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So we follow him even in the midst of other shepherds that are not him. All right. But we will follow him because we know him. So it's, it's all in knowing him. And so it, we know what we're worshiping. And like I said, and I don't think that Christians should let a, a pagan holiday dictate what they want to do. And like Destin said, we should start our own traditions, you know, and when you, you start your own traditions, hey, you don't have anything to worry about, you know, and there's nothing wrong with celebration. I think uh, Taylor said, you know, if the, 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 the apostles or Jesus didn't mention it in the Bible, but, you know, Jesus himself or uh, mentioned or the Bible stated that uh, the Bible, there's not a book big enough co- to contain everything that Jesus did while he was here on earth. So we have a portion of it. All right. But we don't have it in its entirety. All right. But we have enough to get us where we need to get to. And so in other words, what I'm saying is that um, celebration is good. There's nothing wrong with stuff. Jesus celebrated. His first miracle was done at a celebration. All right. So there's nothing wrong with celebration. It's, it's, it's based upon the origin of what you're celebrating and how you're celebrating. Right. Because right. the enemy, because the enemy will come in too, and that, that's why we have to be careful, y'all. The enemy is sneaky and cunning, and he will come in and get us to the point to where we don't, we can't have no fun, we can't be happy, we can't celebrate nothing. I mean that that's where the enemy will take this all the way to the extreme, and that and and that's not God, right? That's not Jesus, right? And so we just have to be careful with it. what did Paul say. Paul said all things are lawful to the believer, but they're not expedient. So in other words. Everything is lawful for the believer, but it's not good that we do everything. <laughs> All right. So Jesus came to what? Set us free. We have the freedom. We shouldn't be bound. No, we All right. We're, we're not bound because Christ set us free. All right. And so we have that freedom. But what it is, there's boundaries in that freedom. And we don't take advantage of that and cross over into those areas. So what we do, everything we do should derive from the love of Christ in us. It should derive from the, the, the law of God and his statutes that were instilled in us. And so as long as we're in those standards and then within those guidelines, then we can celebrate you know, in any way uh, that we can, you know, uh, according to the, to his his standards, all right, and knowing who he is. And that's why it's important to know who he is, you know, uh, because if you know who he is and he knows who you are, then he knows what you're doing. And like I said, we have, I said it earlier, we've been delivered from the law and we're now in the grace. 
all right? But that grace is not a license for us to cross over into sin, all right, just because we have that freedom, all right? So no, we, we don't sin because we have the freedom, but we, we when, when we go and get too close to the sideline, then the Holy Spirit is there to convict us and, and to bring us back in line, and then we repent of that, and then we, 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 we keep on moving. All right. But yes, uh, we, we, we are, we have freedom in Christ Jesus. All right. Right. Hold one more question. One more question. Then be done. So this leads me, does good intentions stop? Doesn't stop the enemy though. Right. No, so, no, no. So, just, just, you know because like, intentions. Of, just because you did it out of good intentions, it still doesn't stop the fact that, the, that that's an open door for the enemy to come in. Right. And, right. I, and like so, I said, I tell people all the time, I say sometimes, you know, you can have, you can have a, a, a good idea, but it may not be a God idea, or you can do a good thing, but it may not be a God thing. All right. And so, you know, and, and that's, that's the difference between fact and truth. You know, you can say a true statement and somebody say, you know what, that's the truth. No, that's a fact. All right. It's a fact that this wall behind us is green, but if, if God said that it's blue, then the truth is it's blue. All right. Because God said it, because what God says he is. All right. That's the sovereignty and authority of his word. All right. Claude, you had something. I saw you over there. Um, yeah, I was I was thinking about uh, Thanksgiving, and I don't know, like I haven't really looked into it. It's been a long time, but um, just first off, like we all know, Thanksgiving was pretty grimy, right? I mean, there was like pilgrims who who had a feast for with these Indians, and then they took their land and they killed them and gave them malaria blankets and all of that, right? Um, right. I mean, I celebrate Thanksgiving, which I shouldn't, but I just like eating and I make an excuse for it and be like, oh, it's just to eat. And so my intents are good. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. um, in our reality, it's, it's bad. And I would think, uh, I mean, I don't know, unless you know the history about Thanksgiving, you probably wouldn't know. But but I, I would think that would be a bad day. But there may be some sort of uh, religious festival or something that went on. That's why, you know, the pilgrims decided to do that or whatever that I don't know. I haven't really looked into it, but that that's pretty much what I had right there. Right, and that's that's the history I knew of it as well too. Uh, but you know, uh, but Sarita gave a, a a point that she said gluttony. <laughs> so uh, you know, I guess that's the spirit behind Thanksgiving. <laughs> but yes, uh, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of stuff, and so and that, and that's why we want to. But with Thanksgiving, go ahead. I'm gonna say with Thanksgiving, there is nothing wrong with fellowshipping and eating but the spirit behind thanksgiving with the greediness of the food and i think like the, the physical history behind it like pastor Neil said give room for the enemy because your intent is good but that's an example good but also give room for the enemy to slip in right right and, and like i said and that's why it's good to bring balance to it because as paul stated you know these type of conversations you can go and they could be endless, you know, because everybody feels a certain way about it. Everybody views the word of God a certain way about it. And it could be endless and on and on and on and on and on. But, you know, like we stated in the beginning with those scriptures that we gave and go back and study those scriptures, knowing the heart of God concerning these things. All right. With the Sabbath, you know, they tried, they, uh, the, the, the Pharisees tried to condemn uh, the followers of Jesus, you know, for eating on the Sabbath, eating out of the field. All right. And Jesus said, look, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. And if I didn't condemn them, then how can you, you know? And he said, if you would know the meaning of these words, then you would know that I desire uh, mercy over sacrifice. All right. So, you know, it, you just got to bring balance to it and learn it and know it for what, for what it's really saying, you know? And then when it comes to the Sabbath, you know, as the other scripture that we gave, it said the Sabbath is just a shadow of the things that were to come. And so Jesus Christ came and then he was the fulfillment of that Sabbath. And he is Lord of the Sabbath, all right? right. So some people say, okay, we got to keep the Sabbath on the on the Saturday or the certain day. Then there's other that says, all right, we have to. Uh, well, every day is the Sabbath day, all right? right. And, he, and the Bible said, you you heard us read it. It says whether you believe every day the same or whether you hold one day higher to the other, he says that they're you know they're both welcomed by God and don't condemn either, all right? So it's not that we should argue and debate over these issues because if we go to the Word of God, God says that he accepted them both. He said, because when you hold, when you hold the Sabbath day and honor the Sabbath day, he said, you're doing it as honoring to the Lord. The one that does not do it, he says, he's doing, he's not doing it as unto the Lord. So they're both unto him. And so he, he said, they're both welcomed by me. Right. Yeah. Cause in other words, those that were honoring the Sabbath day, they were pretty much like, they felt like you couldn't do no healing on the Sabbath. 
if you if something broke down you know we call it the car but back then if your cattle was in the ditch you know they felt like you shouldn't do anything and so jesus was telling them look if you if you got if you got a cattle in the ditch and you know you got to go to work the next day you're gonna leave it in the ditch to die especially when that's your way of providing and doing what you need to do you're gonna let it die or you're gonna go get it out so in other words if you're gonna go get it out on the sabbath then he was saying is man not more important than your cattle Right. So if so, if your brother's sick, if somebody needs help, if they need healing, if they need deliverance, if they need to be ministered to, if you got to get up and go somewhere and be active on that day that you call the Sabbath, then are you not going to go help them? And so that's why he used him as an example. He told the man with the withered hand, he said, put your hand out. Mm -hmm. And he healed him on that day. Why? Because there was a brother in need. Right. And so so if right. so if you're going to if you're going to operate under this um, under the law and you're going to keep the Sabbath and all of those other things, then make sure you're keeping all of them. Because when you, with the law, when you, you break, break one, one you broke them all. them all. You're guilty of them all. All right. Yes. And like Gal uh, Galatians 3 and 1 stated, um, I mean, Galatians 3 and, 3 and 24, I'm sorry, stated that the law itself is a schoolmaster that leads us to Christ. Mm -hmm. So it was just the training wheels to get us to Christ. And once we got to Christ, then he was able to uphold us with his righteous right hand. Yes. And so now we walk under grace and not under the law. All right. Amen. And so we have been set free from the law. All right. So this has been a great lesson. I know it's about 10 o'clock here, Eastern Standard Times. Um, as always, I'm glad you guys um, came on and I'm glad you have a heart to share God's word and to, you know, and get his word out and to uh, not only share his word, but to live his word. And so, you know, that's a great thing. That's a great blessing. And um, again, I'm just uh, astonished. Uh, by the um oh you're in california taylor yeah seven seven o'clock there and i'm just uh astonished and not amazed but you know it's to be expected you know it, it, the growth is beautiful it looked good on you to get like uh, uh donald lawrence said the gifts look the gifts look good on you all right and um so you know and i'm just glad to see that and these these are great topics of discussion you know but sometimes like i said with discussions like these you know, they can kind of get out of hand and that's why it's good to bring them into a, a platform like this to where it can be kind of um, monitored and controlled to where it just don't go on and on and on into all these different things. So you can get into a lot of different things. Now we 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 are, are moderators of a group called Pastors on Facebook and it's 9,000 pastors in there. And, and, and you guys handled this conversation better than those 9,000 pastors, all right? Because, you know, when we get in there, we almost had to shut the whole site down because it was just, it was just too much and these are leaders pastors all right many you know and so you know it's denominational beliefs it's baptismal beliefs it's doctrinal beliefs and you know and all kind of beliefs and beliefs after beliefs you know but we're supposed to be one body all right there's one lord one faith and one baptism all right and 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 the, and jesus christ himself is a part of the godhead body he's the fullness of the godhead body and so that's where we're supposed to be we're supposed to be united coming together but what happens is that conversations like these sometimes it's not the fact of the conversation it's the spirit that will try to creep in along with the conversation that will try to bring division that will try to bring strife and try to bring uh envy and that was caused you know everybody to scatter and all these different things like that so it's, it's not the conversation that is wrong all right the conversation is good but we just have to grow and seeing everybody's on different maturity levels you know this right here this 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 platform right here that we established here through the deliverance ministry it is an emergency room pretty much it is an icu unit and there are a lot of people that have been had surgery done on them and they're laying there in recovery all right and so at a hospital you don't go in there with a whole lot of noise they don't let you go in there and just raise all kind of cane and, and have all kind of distraction and confusion going on why because there are sick people there all right. And so that's what we, we have to be mindful of. And that's why God established us as shepherds over this portion here. All right. So that uh, we can monitor and guide and, and instruct and administer healing and administer deliverance and administer, uh, you know, Jesus through that IV that you can get those nutrients and everything that you need from the Lord so that you can get well again and that you can go forth and be all that God called you to be. All right. And so that's <laughs> that's what this is all about. April gonna make me preach in a minute if she don't quit. <laughs> but yes, uh, so that's what it's all about. And so there's no motive behind all of this, why we do the things we do, why we say, why we step in on certain things. Try, we're not trying to control people. Everybody on here is grown. They can do what they want to do. You know, that's not the thing. But if you say that you have submitted unto this and you wanted us to 
kind of shepherd you until uh, you're in that place where God is bringing you to, then uh, that's what we're going to do. And so uh, we don't want to renege on our part. And we don't want you to renege on your part, but we're just watching, all right, for the enemy to come in. So just like Peter, Peter was one of the disciples. Peter, Peter didn't have no intentions of doing nothing wrong to Jesus. <laughs> You know, <laughs> Jesus was there, and Peter he, and Peter was like, "Look, Jesus, I'm willing to die with you and go to prison with you." I, I die I, for you, Jesus. I, I, never, I, I die never, for you. I would never <laughs> deny you. And Jesus said, "Surely, before the cock crow three times, you're gonna you're gonna deny me three times." Yeah. All right. Another case, he was talking to him. He said, "Well, this, the hour is coming when the Son of Man is gonna have to be handed over to the hands of sinful men and be killed." Peter said, Lord, I'll never let nobody, let them come. It'll be over my dead body. I Ain't nobody, look, I'm with you. I'm all the way with you. Ain't nobody going to do nothing to you as long as I'm living. And what did Jesus say to him? He said, Satan, get behind me. Yeah, all right? He didn't say, Peter, get behind me and sit down somewhere. He said, Satan, get yeah. behind me. Why? Because at that moment, Satan filled Peter's heart. Peter didn't have no intentions of doing nothing wrong. Peter was not trying to do anything contradictory to Jesus Christ. But Satan filled his heart that, at that moment and spoke through him. And Jesus recognized that at that moment, it was not Peter speaking. It was the devil. And he uh, had to shut that devil up. All right. And so when that happens, sometimes that happens with a lot of us, with the best of us. All right. We can speak sometimes uh, and, 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 and come to find out it's not us speaking. All right. And all of us in the deliverance ministry right here, we understand that we don't heard some stuff speak out of people before. And so you have to recognize when it's speaking. Every time they speak out of you, it's not your eyes roll back in your head and your tongue hanging out and foaming at the mouth. No, you just having simple conversation and you say something. All right. But it's not you that said it, but it's that spirit uh, that said it. And so that's what we yeah. address when we're addressing things. We're not addressing people. the people. We, we love everybody in this group. All right. And we and we want everybody to be united together in this group. But the thing is, sometimes a spirit will try to rise up. All right. And when we recognize a spirit rising up, we just deal with the spirit. All right. And as you see, you know, many of you probably thought we would come on here and say, uh, no, you, we, we believe in Christmas and we celebrate Christmas. And no, but no, we're not. All right. We just want to bring balance to the whole thing. All right. And then want it to go in a direction that it didn't need to go in because there are a lot of people that are recovering here. All right. Yeah. There's a lot of people that's under the doctor's care, the great physician. All right. You're under his care right now. And so we have to make sure that that the that the atmosphere Woo! is calm. We have to make sure that the atmosphere is clear. And we have to make sure there ain't no enemy trying to sneak in and, and, and secretly inject something. We got a lot of people that, in the cocoon in here. And we got to make sure that nothing don't come and knock that cocoon off the branch. Right. And so, and so in, in, a, in a setting like this, the enemy really desires to come in and to wreak and wreak havoc all right and to yeah. to scatter the sheep and so like i said and it's not any person in here i know every person in here has a heart for god and they really want to serve god because you wouldn't have been in here if you if you didn't have a heart for god you know but it's just it's just the fact that the enemy will try to slip in at any little weak moment that he can have an opportunity to come through and so he would try to do that so you know that's that's all it is you know and, and this is not a cult you know, we, we're not controlling you and brainwashing you and putting you in a position where you can't talk to nobody but us and all that kind of stuff. No, that's not what it's all about. All right. We're, we're servants of God and yeah. we are dedicated for a lifetime to God's people. Sold out. We're sold out for, to God and we're dedicated to his people. All right. Because that's, that's, that's the call that he's placed on our life. You know, and, and we have been tried and, and in some cases have been found to be true. All right. Not not to say that there's going to be some struggles in our life ahead that we have to struggle with. But what I'm saying is that so far, thus far, our mind is made up and, and we're dedicated to the cause and, and we're willing to go all the way. And so that's where our hearts and minds are, you know, and that's why we caution you a lot of times, you know, because there are even on this, especially on the Internet. All right. You have a lot of people that will pop up today. You ain't never seen them before. And they got a robe on, got a pressure on, and they got this smoke behind them and this music playing. And they prophesying, ha, da, 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 bullshake it. Everybody know the road bullshake I hear the spirit of the Lord say this and that. And then you go and run after that. And you go chasing after that. And you're following them. And the next thing you know, uh, you're trying to find them on the internet. You can't find them. And they somewhere in prison somewhere because they done molested a child somewhere or you know, they just going off somewhere. There's a fly by night. So yeah. you have to be careful about the fly by nights. All right. Find people, ministries that have been tried and true, ministries that have some history and some background, ministries that have some uh some 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 titles under their belt. All right. And 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 follow those because that's solid foundation. It's not a fly by night, and they're and they're not the type of ministry that's gonna drop you. 
all right? Because you have some that'll bring you out. Come here, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was crippled, all right? Saul's son, but he, but he, because he was dropped as a baby, all right? And mm -hmm. so you have people out here, ministries out here that hadn't been established or tried or true, and they have wrong motives, and you go and follow after these things, and then you get out there, and then they what? They drop you in your vulnerable moment. And Jesus. then you become crippled and paralyzed, and then you have need of somebody My God. that has has stability and has has titles and have uh, uh, the, the 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 true and living God on their side to come and pray you out of that thing. And so, and we learn through our local church pastor, and you know, as far as uh, the the sheep getting all kind of doo doo on their feet and getting dirtied up and muddied up and have to come back get cleaned up. So we you know we just teach them hey how to stay with the fold. And, and go to the green pastures that God is leading us to. So where you can be fed and you can be protected. And then, you know, and you have a shepherd that's like David that uh, that uh, uh, ripped the beard off of that Take lion that and, and, and will kill that bear for you. All right. Praise the Lord. So my stomach is burning. She said, my stomach is burning. Holy Spirit, have his way. All right. Go ahead, April. I'm sorry. I, I was having a moment. I just have a question um, for someone in the back. Mm -hmm. Um you see some growth i just was asking if you see growth in me if am i included in that statement just want to make yes. sure yes yes um, okay thank you. you all of you and 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 the boldness that and you are already bold but god's bringing out more boldness in you and then and then you having that confidence to step out on the boldness that god's placed within you yeah all right and so you 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 are already set in a place and 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 see and, and there's there, this is just a beginning for you all mm -hmm. right this is just a beginning stage for you. Yeah. You know, to say small, despise not the day of small beginnings. This is just a beginning stage for you. And 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 you you can't even comprehend what God is getting ready to do through you in ministry. Yeah. You know, he's setting you up and building the foundation now. And, and it's going to seem like it's going to take a little while for that foundation to be established. But it, it don't 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 get discouraged because of that long time. And it's not going to be a long time. It's just going to seem like a long time to you. But God is doing it. And what he's doing, he's making that foundation sure. Because in order for you to go to the height that God is taking you to, you're going to have to be solid and seriously founded, all right, in order uh, to be able to stand under that, all right. And God's going to do some great and mighty things because you're you're not local, you're international, mm. all right. Your yeah. ministry is is not local, you're inter you're international, all right. And God is going to bring that to pass, and He's going to give you some little snippets to show you some glimpse of it to allow you to see where He's taking yes. you to, yes. all right. But just be encouraged so and keep, I... keep going in the way that you're going. It's going to happen. Yeah. The international, y'all, I've had so many dreams over the years in different. Mm. Amen. Amen. You have an international ministry. Jesus. And he's not taking you to the nation. He's taking you plural to the nations. You, you, you're international. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. All right. Somebody else had a question. I told you guys that he called us to reach, teach, and mm -hmm. execute. And so as we execute, God is calling you to execute. Speaking and so that, you. that means that very thing that God has planted on the inside of you as, as it's being nurtured and God is um, using you to birth it out, then you have to go and see the thing is that's, that's what there are a lot of churches. Um, not all of them because but the fact is, the main thing a church should do is equip people to go out. Everybody's not called to be a pastor, no. Everybody's not called to be a prophet, no. But you should, everybody in ministry should be sent out to do something. And so when I say sent out, I'm not talking about like, you know, they ain't got to have a platform and all, but everybody should be able to reach somebody when it comes to ministry. And so that's our job. And that's our goal is to, to help teach you guys so that you can get to a place to where you're comfortable going out. Whatever that assignment is, going out, going out. The inside of the church is a great thing. It's very necessary. The building of the church is for the fellowship, it's for the uplifting of the believer, the encouragement to be strengthened, to be taught, but then you gotta go out. You gotta take that thing that you got and you gotta go out. Go out, yes, yes, yes. Ashley said her stomach was burning. Go ahead, Fallon. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. And this was a really good teaching. And everything like how you were saying at the beginning, like this is like all a process. And some of us, you know, that are new and babes in Christ, they might not be at a level that someone that's been in it for a while. Um, like just for example, like for with the makeup thing, 
God, that's something God personally did with me, you know, and I, you know, I, I learned about it and then I had conviction. So I haven't been wearing it for a while, but before, like when I was still as new into all this, like, I don't remember like the details of it, but I meant to like, uh, not to come at condemnation because that's not what my intentions were, but I went to go speak on it and I felt conviction from the Holy Spirit. Like this was something personal between you and I. So I just want to say like how you were saying, you know, something just might be between you and God and that's it. So, and not everything is meant to be shared or anything like that. So that happened to me in that right. situation. So this was a really good teaching. Thank you guys. And thank you. Thank you for coming on and being faithful as you are. Um, you know, it's just like this, my wife and I, you know, our relationship is stable enough and strengthened enough to where we can door dash at night and get an order at the strip club and we can go pick it up. And I, and, and she not have to leave me behind because I'm stuck there. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, I don't even go in. I let her go in. That's wisdom, honey. <laughs> That's wisdom. Right. So, you know, it's just, it's the maturity. It's the maturity <laughs> thing. You know, there's yeah. some, some things that some people are ready for. And then there's some things that pe some people, other people are not ready for, you know, say you got a babe in Christ that's on here, you know, and I come in and I start arguing and tearing somebody down about an issue and all of that. And then somebody that's a babe in Christ said, it was like, wow, I mean, I, I thought I fought enough at home. I thought I fought enough in the streets. And here it is now. I see, you know, the Christians who are supposed to be loving each other and, you know, and they just tearing each other apart, you know, over a small issue, you know. And so, like Paul was saying, don't let genealogies, old wise fables, don't let uh, superstitions. superstitions or or, oh or, or endless conversations, you know, uh, keep you so distracted that you miss God. You know, the Pharisees, the Talmud and the Mishnah that they created. They were so caught up in that, that they missed God when he came, you know, he, they missed him when he came. And so, and he, and, and, and he had, he had, he had, to, he had to go on and, and fulfill his mission. All right. Miss Pam said, pastor, you're so on it. I was at church one night with the pastor I follow. Long story short, he called me and a young lady up front. The church was full wall to wall to me. He said to me, he was going to ask God to send me to hell and look Satan face to face. Uh-oh, hold on. I lost it, y'all. Look Satan face to face. He is in jail on rape charges for a young girl for years that damaged me bad. Wow. Right. And so, and that's that's what we're trying to teach in this group is, is to teach stability and get surely founded. All right. And that's very, very important because <clears throat> you know, that's what that's how a lot of people end up hurt, you know, and as they find themselves in groups like this, because they're like, you know, I've been hurt in church, you know. I, I've, I've been hurt in church. They, they portrayed themselves to be this way. And I got there and it was a different story. All right. Not to say that we're perfect. We're nowhere as perfect. But, you know, it's only by the grace of God that we do what we do and we are who we are. But, you know, you have to find someone that's, that's like I said, that's, that's founded, that has been tried and true. All right. A ministry like that. And so you have to learn how to seek out ministries like that. You have to learn how to step into uh, those arenas like that. And, and come back out without being hurt and scarred and beat up and bruised. Because the truth of the matter is, no matter what church you go to, there's going to be sick people there, people with issues, people with problems, because that's where they're supposed to be, you know. And it's a, it's a, it's a thing that used to eat me up when I hear people say, you know, I'm not going to church over there because they're full of hypocrites. They, they like full a of, they full of, I got a caterpillar. <laughs> God is still confirming. So there's a caterpillar. He, he's still confirming. All right. And so, you know, they say, well, you know, I'm going over there because they got hypocrites and all this stuff and all that kind of stuff over there, you know, but that's where the hypocrites supposed to be. You know, they're supposed to be in the company of the saints and where they can learn who Christ is and gain freedom. All right. So that's where they're supposed to be at. But what it is, you're supposed to have leadership in place to handle those sick folk. Mm -hmm. So where you ain't got people out sitting in the lobby of the emergency room bleeding out from their aortic vein when they should be priority and in the back, you know, getting some surgery done. All right. You, you know, you have to kind of prioritize where they are. And so and that's what we kind of do in the group, because we know personally every each and every one situation and where they are, what level of maturity you at and, and you know, and, and what and what and you have shared with us. And we know that part. So we try our best to kind of keep everybody in, in the right place. And, and we're not doing it, but it's the Lord that's doing it because you belong to God. You don't belong to us. All right. He just gives he us just a gives and, and, uh, and destiny. You're in a good place. You're in a good place. You're excelling. 
All right. If I had to put a grade on you in the spirit, I would say that you are A, B, honor roll. All right. You, you are excelling in the things of God and you are right on course and right on track to where God is taking you to. All right. So just, just continue the, the, the race, continue to stay in God's face and seeking him. And he's going to bring you to that place, what you, that, that, what you desire, what you have already seen, because you've seen yourself in a place already. All right. And God, have, and God showed it to you. God is going to bring you to that place. And it's a process getting there, but don't don't um get impatient with the process, but go through the process right now. I see I see you as as clay in the hands of the potter. Don't curse it. And God is and God is molding you and He's making you. And sometimes it'll aggravate you, sometimes it'll frustrate you, sometimes it'll have you angry, sometimes it'll have you don't wondering if this thing really for you or not, and all of that. But in actuality, it is for you. God is making you, and He's He's pressing those those places that were out of shape. And he's molding you and putting you in the position and making you to what he wants you to be. So you're excelling. Uh, I can say you're, you're one that excels. And, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say I'll try to speak as a father to you that I am proud of you. All right. I'm proud of you. you, you you're a job well done. All right. Uh, like I said, from the time that we met you until now, you know, there, there's been a, a, a growth spurt. So, amen. And, and for all of you. And we know we got some powerhouse people in here. Uh, you know, Sarita, Sarita came already equipped. Sarita, she just came equipped. She just happened to get a little bit of deliverance uh, when she first got in here, but she uh, she was already equipped. You know, uh, Minister Latoya, uh, uh, quite a few of you, um, and I want to start calling names because I have to call everybody's name, but Fallon and Claude, you know, definitely, definitely. I'm very, very encouraged by you guys, you know, in, in the change, I mean, like the, the drastic change from day one, you know, and it's awesome now. And though they're already established in a church out there in Cleveland. Uh, it's too cold for us to go up right now, but we might catch you in the summer months. Uh, but yeah, you guys, uh, awesome job, awesome job. Keep the faith and continue on, all right? And then we, like I said, we had a lot of new people to come along as well. My son, Deshaun on here, um, you know, he, he, he shocked me, you know, um, just one day he was talking about the Lord and, and he's been here talking about the Lord ever since. And so he made a, uh, a 180 degree turnaround and is uh, running for the Lord. So, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. Didi, you know, Didi had to tell her own testimony. Uh, Diero, she has to tell her own testimony. Um, it's just awesome what the Lord has done with her in a short period of time. And, and, and that's how, that's how good God is. That's how good God is, you know? Um, and uh, there's a, there's a lot of you, Elvira, a demon slayer. <laughs> she she if it comes to dismantle a demon, let her dismantle. All right, she gonna knock his kneecaps off. She gonna cut his ankles off. She Fair gonna way. she gonna stab him in the toes, and all that good stuff. And she know how to she know how to do that very well. So, um, I'm just thankful for all of you. All of you. It's just a blessing. It's just a blessing. Uh, Sister Juanita joined in with us. She's been uh, faithful with us and hanging in there and um, her and her sons, uh, going, they're going to wreak havoc on the kingdom of darkness. And so uh, we thank God for her, you know, joining in with us and hanging in there. Um, God's going to do some great things. Got to do some great things with her. All right. My wife is telling me I might as well call everybody's name since I called all the names. I should, I know I shouldn't have got started, but uh, you know, <laughs> God bless you. Taylor, Ashley, April, Destiny, Juanita, Fallon, Claude, Darnell, Oh, congratulations to Darnell on his new ventures. Uh, God's doing some great things for him. We applaud you, brother. Uh, Rochelle, on fire for the Lord. Uh, our cheerleader, she keeps us pumped and primed up. Uh, Sarita, you already know. I mean, we we here. You already know, Sarita. Uh, Tiffany, uh, God bless you. Thank God for you. Uh, Sister Latoya, she's Javar. been with us a minute now. Lavar, Javar. Javar. I want to say Lavar. That's a demon name. Um, Javar. All right, um, Deshaun, Kiara, Elvira, Pamela, uh, Bubbles, Hernandez, God bless you. Thank God for you as well. Uh, Dominique, thank God for you. And Diara, definitely thank God for you, all right? So, yeah, let's let's keep all those scriptures in mind. For those of you that came on a little late, uh, I'm gonna give you the scriptures again, uh, just so you can just so you can write it down um, if you don't want to watch the, watch the video again. <laughs> um, first scripture is Matthew chapter 12, verse 1 through 15. The second scripture we covered was the entire chapter of uh, Colossians chapter 2, 
Colossians chapter 2, the entire chapter. Then we went Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. And then we also went to Romans chapter 14, verse 5 through... No, 3 through 5. 3 through 5. I don't know why I wrote that back. <laughs> he wrote it backwards, 5, three, <laughs> five well, through 3. Read it backwards, it might help you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to uh, the Christmas tree, um, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 through 5. And then we dealt with uh, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1. All right. And I believe that's all, all, all the scriptures that we covered. Yeah. You got a, is that it? Anybody else have any questions? We're so excited. Y'all, I can't wait till Saturday. I know we threw this in there, but I can't wait till Saturday because we really are going to dig in the fivefold. So we're going to hit the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, the prophet. Which one I'm missing? What fivefold? Uh, and the, the apostle, apostle, the pastor, pastor the evangelist, teacher, the teacher, and the a prophet. prophet. And evangelist. All right, we're gonna oh, deal with them. Write and then, it down. Now, those are those are the uh, fivefold gifts, but we also may go into the gifts of the Holy Spirit as well, if the, if time permit. If not, then we'll make that a, a a part two, and we'll pick that back up on Tuesday. Um, but if not, we'll we'll go ahead and uh, we'll if time it, permit, we'll do the both. We'll start it and go through. Yeah. So invite your people. Let them know. We appreciate you. We love y'all. Is there any last minute sayings before we end? Because we had our two hour limit. <laughs> Go ahead, Taylor. Um, I just want to say, if you guys all feel like your prayers aren't being answered, just remember uh, uh, 2 Peter, I think, uh, let me see, where is it? Uh, 2 Peter uh, 3, 8. Uh, basically, in God's eyes, our prayers are already answered. Um, if any of you feel like your prayers aren't being answered, just know uh, God's time is perfect. And uh, his timing uh, might not seem the best at times. And I know that sometimes we get frustrated with, you know, things because, you know, we're so used to things being instant. And I just want to say that, guys, I know what it's like to be frustrated. All right. Just hang in there. Trust in the Lord. and. Know that your prayers are already answered and believe that they're answered. All right? Love you guys. Amen. God Amen. Bless God bless you. Amen. We serve a prayer answering God. And he said the time will come when he will answer you before you even ask. All right? Yes, so. that's right, Miss Pam. It's your time to be free. Reach out, grab it, receive the freedom of the Lord. It's your time. Chains are breaking now in Jesus' name. In your life, every chain has to bow. In Jesus' name, it has to break, and the spirit behind it has to bow in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. um, prayers for family. I slayed some demons at court today, losing my voice, sore throat, cramping, and toothache. We come <laughs> against all that stuff in Jesus' name. Amen. We come against voice loss, sore throat, cramping, and toothache in Jesus' name. I pray strength now that your strength will be restored in the mighty name of Jesus, yes, and Lord. every prayer that, was, that has gone out will be answered in Jesus' name. We come into agreement with you now. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you, Taylor. Appreciate it. Yeah, Miss Pam, God is doing a work in your life. God is doing a work in your life. He, and matter of fact, I hear God saying, I'm, a blow, I'm about to blow her mind. God is doing some things. He's stripping you for some from some things of old. And God is bringing a newness of life to you. A newness. And so, yeah, God is just doing, He's. I see him really doing a work in your life. So I thank God for it. Amen. I think I, th I see him breaking some generational stuff off of you as well. Amen. Generational stuff is leaving in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Amen. Jesus' name. Thank Praise you. the Lord. And we and we also uh, say we speak blessings to the ones that are on are not on here tonight. We know that this group we have over hundred people in this group, um, and every one of them not able to come on every time that we're on. So we thank God for all of you. Thank God for all of you. And um, and we believe that God is uh, gonna, gonna, gonna bless you richly. And we thank God for the Facebook audience tonight, uh, coming in tonight and joining in with us. And we hope you were blessed and received something uh, from this particular uh, teaching that we're doing. We do this uh, every Tuesday, every Saturday night. Um, and pretty much basically anytime the Lord put on our heart, we might do pop-up 
lives sometimes. You know, we'll just pop up at the spare of the moment. You know, the Lord place something on our heart, but we thank God for all of you. Um, you guys are spread out all across the world. And, um, you know, we wish that you all were here in North Carolina with us, but, you know, we can't have our cake and eat it too. But we just <laughs> thank God for the opportunity to fellowship with you guys every time we get a chance to through uh, this particular Zoom. So um, God bless you all. Anybody else have any more questions, comments before we go? I want to leave without anybody getting out what they want to have to say. Yes, Lord. Come on, Sarita. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Sarita, North Carolina couldn't hold you. <laughs> we'll be in trouble over here. North Carolina wouldn't be able to handle you. Yes, come on over here. Honey. Oh, you're tired of the snow. I can I can feel you on that part. Grab I feel y'all. Y'all keep talking. Prophecy gonna start happening. Like yeah. I can feel we on the we on the edge of getting ready to say stuff stuff to serve. I can feel it. I'm yeah. over here looking at Miss. I'm drawn to Miss Juanita. I'm drawn yeah. to Ashley, but I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Let it flow. Amen. If you feel it, don't hinder it. Go ahead, prophet. Loose here. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Thank you, God. Dominique said, y'all keep talking. <laughs> y'all know how it is, especially on a Tuesday night. It's Sunday night here every night. Lord mm -hmm. have mercy. All right, well, I'm telling y'all, I promise y'all, and I'm live on Facebook, um, <laughs> Bible studies, I didn't be excited about no Bible studies or deliver. It's me, me. It's Tuesday. Oh, we about to get together. <laughs> Anybody else feel like that? For real. It's like, when we get together, though, if it's, it's the word, but it's like. It's family coming. I don't out. know, but it's so cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I get excited. I'm not even the one teaching, but I get excited because I'm. Just I to see. With, yeah, I come with expectancy. So every time you come in the presence of God, you ought to come with an expectancy that God is going to do something. He's going to do something. He's going to say something. Something's going to look something like that song Tasha Cobb has. Something has to break. I feel like when I'm in the presence of God, when I'm amongst my brothers and sisters, something has to break. Something yeah. has to happen. So, look, God, I'm expecting you to show up. I told you, I'm like, I'm almost like Jacob. Lord, I ain't going to let you go till you bless me. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to let you go. <laughs> I so you know what it is too i think i said this before is everybody's intention when the people that are they really is about god right and about growing in him and right. wanting right. to learn him and please him right like, it's just amen and that's, that's why how that's, we, i don't know if that's it y'all yeah and that's how we try to keep it and that's what we purpose with the group we say we're not gonna just have a group and just let anything go on but we want to have it where it's the 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 pure motive our motive is to serve God, to love God, to love his people, to be in unity, to all grow together and serve him and his purpose and 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 further his kingdom in the, in, in the earth realm. So that's our purpose. That's our mission. All right. And so and that's how we, we like to keep it, you know. And like I said, we can get on here and argue for days and then we accomplish nothing for the kingdom of God. But when we come on here and we grow together and we strategize together and we learn the word of God together, and we all fight together. One can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 flight. Imagine all of us together. We, the, the devil don't like that. And that multiplication. The devil don't like that. And so, and that's that's what's happening here, all right? It's because there, there's a group of, of God people that are hungry for God. And the Bible says, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled, all right? And so we, that's what's happening. Sorry down there talking, <laughs> April. They said they see something about to break for you, Miss Juanita. Mm -hmm. You're on the verge. On the verge. Just keep keep something pressing. Something has. Rochelle sang it the other day. Something has to break. I believe you'll get and look, Ashley, through it. <laughs> Ashley, girl, you're going to be over there telling the demon where to go and how to get there and that accent you got. <laughs> with fire i'm telling you you ever show with that accent see see what i love about god is that he makes no mistakes you right. see what i'm saying like down to the way you talk where you're from your mannerisms like y'all he it was cool about him is he lets you have your own flavor with it you understand oh, yeah. what i'm saying oh yeah. yeah michelle got her own little flavor with it you know y'all know what i mean like <laughs> Hey, she came on there and sang that song. Something has 
to break. I was like, sing, Rochelle. <laughs> and now, and now, Kiera, Mama putting in the chat that Kiera can sing. Let me find out. We about to start doing worship uh -oh. before we have Bible study. We have a worship going on. Let me find out. Where are you from, Ashley? <laughs> uh, West Virginia. West Virginia. Okay. <laughs> which part? Which part? Um, Logan. Logan. Okay, I used to go to Logan. I used to deliver to uh, Lowe's down there. Oh yeah, I used to work at Lowe's. Oh, okay. So on our yeah. way to Ohio, we can stop by West Virginia. Yes. Yes, that'd be cool. That'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah, we we come through there over there up 77 going 77 up to what 58, I believe that is. I don't know nothing about no roads, baby. You the man. Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> yes. That'd be awesome. Oh wow. <laughs> April quiz. You cracking me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like y'all understand, all of y'all, and I, I'm I haven't arrived nowhere, but I'm just saying, once y'all get to this place, because see, when God sees us, He sees the finished product, right? right. We got to catch up to what He's already said and what He already yeah. knows. So He's yeah. really just waiting on us, right? So when you get to that place of like owning it, yes. standing in it, speaking mm -hmm. the language, yes, Amen. Woo! It's a wrap because <laughs> everything, everything is, let me tell you, when I got to the place where I said, because fear had me whoo, so bound. I mean, I had goosebumps on my scalp. I know you could be that scared that you get goosebumps <laughs> on your scalp. When, when things was going crazy in my house, yep. after I did that fast, I don't know if I told you that, but anyway, I did this fast and I walked in my house, man. My daughter seeing demons everywhere. I had CD players in every room. My light bill was like eight hundred dollars. No lie, I was sleeping at my girl Adrian's house on her her daughter twin bed for weeks at a time because I was scared to come to my house. But I remember the Lord said, "I gave you a uh, power, love, and a sound mind. Give you no spirit of fear." So I walked in the house and I said, "All right, Lord, you told me this. So how are we gonna do this?" Once I face fear, conquer fear, realize that fear really is a weapon. It, it's, it, it lets you know what's going on and yeah. it's not to paralyze you. Oh, then I could move in the room, baby. <laughs> yeah. Then I could move with it. I was like, oh, oh, say what? And then when I saw how, what I did to them, when I said, Jesus. <laughs> yes. So all I'm saying is, is when Lord, did her phone go dead? Y'all know who April she reminds left. me of? Sarita. <laughs> you know who April reminds me of? Where's she at? I can't even see her. Oh, uh, oh yeah, that's right. Your voice. Um, Tiffany. Tiffany through her voice. <laughs> mm -hmm. You said what? Not, not that, not you, Tiffany. The other Tiffany, the um, one that she shared in the group. That's who. That's who. Um, April reminds me of three days, right? Three days, seventy-two three days. hours. <laughs> but yes, and so that's what happens. Like she was speaking, she had that spirit of fear going on there, you know. And the Bible says that in order to go in and spoil the goods of a strong man, he must first come in and bind the strong man and take his weapons, and then he can spoil his goods. And so we have to turn that thing around. We go, we bind the strong man. And we strip him of his armor and then we spoil his goods. Well, Anita Sarita said that um she that she's putting me. you on the prayer list because God's about to do something in your life and you are gonna and God's gonna get the glory. Let me see. Yeah, because God is about to get the glory in your life. You have been really patient, she said. She's back. <laughs> right. The devil is a lie. Y'all know how he do. He mad. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's how we do. We get knocked out. We just come right back. <laughs> hey, we got that bounce back anointing. That bounce back. <laughs> <laughs> he can't take us out. We just bounce back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I love y'all. All right. All right. Well, Deshaun, De'Ara, y'all good? Everybody good? Bubbles, good? Dominique, E, Miss Pam? Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Okay, I see a new message. I believe you're getting me to it. She said, I receive it. Amen. 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 He said, He's good. Deshaun's good. Claude, you good. I believe you're getting me. Bubbles yeah, is good. I'm, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. 
Amen. All right, and I want us all to be in prayer for that one spirit that Claude has. Don't, don't do that. We need to pray them raiders off of it. Pray that raider spirit off of it. Don't do that. <laughs> hey, you know what? Don't be mad. Um, you actually should be on my team because we're getting ready to take out the Cowboys here in a couple weeks. So, you know what I'm saying? You, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be rooting for you then. But after that, you know, we enemies again. So. Lord, That's have we, have, we have lots of bandwagon seats, please. Cowboys, come on over. cowboys. <laughs> Darnell said, I passed my test and I get my CDL permit Monday. Woo! Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Yes, he will. See, that was that was just a dream uh, a few months ago. And, and look at you now, you're walking in it. The doors have opened up and it's happening for you. He said, I open up the windows of heaven and I pour you out a blessing. Right. Won't Amen. have room enough to receive. And while we're talking about that, let, let me pray real quick. Let me pray real quick for those that are continue to sow seeds and everything. We want to we want to pray God's blessing over those seeds. Father, we thank you for everyone that had a heart to sow. And Father, we thank you, God, for their obedience to your word, God, not to us, but to your word. Yes, Father. And Father, we pray, God, that through that obedience, that you will put a special blessing upon every seed, God. We pray, God, that you will give a supernatural fertilizer, God, that would expedite it, that will mm -hmm. cause it to grow up and bring forth a bountiful harvest, God, in this season, God. And we thank you for it right now, God. We pray just as Isaac so God, and in the same year received a hundredfold blessing. We pray, God, that you will bless them 100 folds, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into their bosom. Amen. For their obedience to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, y'all. We love y'all. We love y'all so much. Um, we appreciate y'all for coming on. So don't forget Thursday is our fast day, um, six to six. Okay, six to six. And if I forget, y'all remind me. I got a lot going on sometimes, but I'll put our target prayers on there for Thursday. And um, then on Saturday, we come back and we will be doing our Saturday night um, Bible study. And again, y'all know what we're talking about. So for those of you who was interested in asking all those questions, I want y'all to come with your pens and papers ready, okay? We'll be talking about the different gifts, um, the different, the, um, the office of the prophetic, uh, the office of the prophet, the office of the prophet, the, um, the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discernment, speaking in tongues, the different variations of tongues, the purpose of tongues, all of that other stuff. And we'll also be discussing the five-fold ministry. And so this will probably be a two-part series because of the pack, impactful information um, that's associated with the topic. But you guys are going to um, get the answer, be able to ask those questions and get the answers to them, okay? And so, yes. So I'm excited. We love you all. Continue to let God use you. Continue to let your light shine so that men will see the glory of God. All right, let, let him be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. All right, light those torches. Keep your oil burning. Jesus is coming back soon. Amen. Keep yeah. enough oil with you so you won't yeah. have to go back and buy more. You don't want to be like the, the, the five foolish virgins who didn't bring enough and was trying to pull on to somebody else and, and they need to borrow some more oil and then they had to leave and go get some. And when they came back, the bridegroom had already came and closed the door. <laughs> So I really say, come sweep me, just come sweep me, Jesus. <laughs> swoop me, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, swoop, swoop and all. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Uh, who who wanna who wanna pray us out tonight? If if that, if all hearts and minds are clear. Hey, somebody can pray us out, but I just want to say this. Y'all remember when y'all was dating back in the day, like when you were teenagers and you was on the phone, like in middle school and high school on the phone with your boo and you'd be like, you I love that. you. Yeah, I love you. I love you more. I love you more. I love you more. You hang up. No, no you, you hang, hang up. up. No, you not. And then now they got to say, well, they don't even hang up. They just fall asleep on the phone. They FaceTime, <laughs> FaceTime each other and just fall asleep on the phone. My boys are bad for that. My, <laughs> that, my 18 year old, like I've been in his room before and I'm like, what in the world are you doing? Who's on the phone? Like, here's somebody snoring. And then I have to mute it. Tell about she gets me up in the morning. I'm like, y'all, is, <laughs> is that like a replica of having somebody in the room with you? Like, I don't understand. I guess uh, crazy. See, see, we got to break that spirit. They shacking up over the phone. Right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I caught it. The devil thought yeah, he was yeah, slick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He thought he was he slick. Thought he was slick. <laughs> we won't kill that spirit. So I really said, I took a nap tonight and I came back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Sarita, you got that nap annoying. You you don't got to wear it. used to not be that way. That pregnancy that got you, your nap in a minute in the middle of a. Uh, she been walking heavy in that nap annoying. Yeah. 
she'll nap and come back be like i'm up now i remember the last slide we like stop reading you up she's like i'm up now I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right that's that's she awesome. was like that's in awesome. my sleep i'd be like amen <laughs> <laughs> that's our daughter stop nana but okay who gonna pray us out tonight come on let the anointing flow let the lord use you April, April, like she want to close us out tonight. <laughs> if I do it, y'all, we might be on here for another 45 minutes praying. I mean. Well, well hold on. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> exactly. Oh, warrior. We thank, are y'all learning some stuff in April's um, warrior training? We thank God for it. We thank God for what he's doing in her and through her. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I've started watching. I got to catch up. I got to catch up all these videos. Yeah, I was watching them, but I was walking in the church while I was watching. I had to cut it off. I started to go sit in the parking lot and let somebody else preach. But this all right. <laughs> Y'all, I'm doing it. Yeah, you know, it's fun. As ministry, it can be fun. Serving is right. fun. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be work. Right. You know, you feel tired, but it's a good tired, you know? So mm -hmm. I think we'd be having fun too in there. And we're going to have oh, yeah. so much fun. Amen. I need to work on worship. Okay. Amen. All right. Who's praying? Who's praying? Somebody. Anybody. I be done called Claude to pray. Listen, that's why the enemy tried to take me out. I was wearing my voice out because of spiritual warfare. She was praying today. Go ahead, Dustin. <laughs> yes, I like her soft method. Thank you, April. <laughs> she looking like who, me? You a warrior. I see you backing out of the camera. Don't, don't try to hide. Don't tell yeah. me that. Right now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not making no excuse, but I can't think. Like my brain is really blank. At uh, -uh you need to renounce that. Call that stuff back. Call, mm -hmm. call your memory back. All right, go, you can't move. go ahead, Rochelle. My my daughter pointed Rochelle out. She's like, I've been waiting. I've been waiting. Thank God you called. She prayed us in and out today. <laughs> Y'all want my words here? <laughs> Say it again. I said, you guys want my words here? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. You said we want your what? We want my words tonight for prayer. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and pray, girl. Pray heaven down. All right, I'll try. Let me do my best here. Ready? Here we go. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gathering tonight. We thank you for everybody coming together and just leading your teaching through us so we can understand you better and understand each other better and what you ask of us. And we pray against anything that comes against our minds or anything that comes against us physically in our lives that you just you just protect us from that. Keep us safe. Um, keep us all on this journey together, anointed with each other so we can just keep prospering for you, tearing down Satan's kingdom for you and just rising up and doing your work in these last days and grabbing more souls for your kingdom. Lord, we just thank you so much for the blessings you pour into our lives and for, for just continuing to bless over us and our families and our friends and keeping us right where you want us, Lord. And we praise this in your holy name. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. And you're that, welcome. See, that was good. That was good. See, and the more you do it, the more God will equip you and strengthen you. And he will even stretch your, um, your, not just your vocabulary, but the more you, uh, read, God will begin to bring those scriptures and that's in the word of God to your remembrance as you're praying. So, um, so that's what it's about is exercising it right. and don't be ashamed. When I first started praying, praying, they would call me up to pray. I said, Lord, thank you for this gathering. We love you in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs> that's how I started out, you know, but then sometimes I can go now and pray for hours. Yes. And like, Lord, you're going to let me stop. I don't have much voice. Left. Can I stop? You know, Amen. but. Uh, and remember guys, keep your spiritual antennas up. Okay. The enemy is out. He's lurking always seeking whom he may devour. He's watching to see who he can steal, kill, and destroy, okay? And so remember, we're warriors. So we don't wait for the enemy to attack us, but we go after the enemy. And so the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. 
but the violent take it by force. And so just be watchful, be mindful of the things that you say and you do and be and even be praying. There you go, Taylor. Put on the whole armor of God. Suit up, suit up. Day in and day out. Why? Because the enemy comes in like a flood, but God is going to lift up a standard. And so just be on watch, okay? Be on watch for the thing, even through conversations. Um, just, and be mindful of the words that you put out because you'll be tried by the stuff that you put out. Okay, you'll be tried by the stuff that you put out. And so let's just be watchful. Um, apply the word of God to your life daily. All right. And right. be bold soldiers for him. Do not be afraid and do not be fearful. Why? For the Lord thy God is with you. All right. And so I just wanted to release that word um, tonight to encourage you. Stay on the wall. Stay in his face. God has you. He has your back. All right. He's with you always. Even when it doesn't feel like it, God is with you. All right. Even in your conversations and sharing Christ, God is with you. He'll give you the words to say. All right. All right. So, so suit up and tell that devil you got three days. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Love, Love you, you and enjoy. We pray peace over your mind. Good night. Thank and you. The God surpass our understanding and give you rest in him tonight. Perfect rest. Amen. And we pray walls of protection around your home and your families. And we take every thought now captive and we take it, um, we take up captive and it comes under sub the subjection of Jesus Christ. All right. So gird your minds with the word of God. Make sure you're watchful on what you go to sleep on tonight. All right. In Jesus name, we love you all. God bless you. And we look forward to talking to you guys this week. Love you guys. Love you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.